Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, common news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by the copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. Choke no joke, I will be using content in this show, video, print, information, all using under the Fair Use Act. This show tonight This show tonight, if you thought yesterday I gave y'all information that blew your mind, I mean, I had people hitting me from all over the world yesterday about the show yesterday because I gave up information that some people heard for the first time. Tonight, When I tell you the rabbit hole goes deep and Notorious B.I.G. and Tupac killing, after tonight, I promise you, you're not going to see no more websites or uh, YouTube channels talking about Keefe D. killed Tupac. You're not. So just go out to art and... uh, you know, who else? Cam and all these other dudes, Vlad, all these dudes that interview people for years over the Tupac Biggie conspiracy. Tonight, I got the information that nobody else may have because I had never heard none of this stuff before. And these are official documents that I have. I'm not saying where it came from. None of that is important. None of that is important. But what I'm telling you, what I'm about to give you tonight is most of the facts in this case and a lot of shit that was covered up, a lot of things y'all don't know about. Like I said, y'all came in yesterday and got your mind blown tonight you need to call everybody you know that got love for tupac for biggie because i'm telling you what you about to witness you have not witnessed on any other platform before so all y'all that know these people that be doing interviews on Pocket Big, you need to hit them up and be like, yo, y'all better go watch Choke because y'all got a whole bunch of other interviews to do now. When I tell you the floodgates is about to open, the information that y'all are going to see, and like I told y'all, this is the ghost of Russell Poole, Horns Wedgie. I'm going to bring y'all tonight a lot of Russell Poole's investigation. Now you're going to see why uh, allegedly, I don't know if they killed him or what, but when I tell you, you're going to hear stuff that you never heard before tonight that's going to change your whole perspective on this whole case. Let me tell you something, y'all. I was reading this stuff going through Russell Poole's notes and, and stuff From last night when I got off, when I got off last night, I got this mysterious information. I ain't going to say from who. I don't even know from who. 
but I know this is hardcore, all facts. I the, all the paperwork is there, and I'm going to show y'all on the screen so y'all don't think that I'm messing, making any of this stuff up. You got to hit everybody you know that ever had an interest in this. If it's little C's and you know him, hit him up. If it's CJ, you know him, hit him up. Biggie's daughter, Faith, Puff. Everybody need to be tuned in tonight. Because what you are about to witness, you have not witnessed before. And that's on everything. I'm telling you, I was like, what the, and had I not had to do a lot of stuff tonight, I mean today, I would have came on at noon and kept going. I'm not stopping tonight. I don't care if this is going to be 12 hours straight. What you about to see, you have no clue. That's what I'm saying. Hit Gene Deal, everybody, yo. I'm going to give y'all a chance to hit people up. Choke no joke. You already know you are about to witness something in the biggie. And they about to get justice, brother. They are about to get justice. Because if the FBI is watching my show tonight, indictments is going to fly. You hear me? I'm telling y'all about this. What I'm about to bring y'all tonight is going to be a movie. You hear me? A movie. Please share this live. Share this live. If you want justice for Pac and Big, share this live. I'm telling y'all. Choke no joke. I am here. Now, moderators, I need y'all to be on point because I unblocked a whole bunch of people. Too many people complaining about y'all blocking if they ain't disrespecting and they just got an opinion let them have their opinion if they not disrespecting me that's fine let them have their opinion don't block them for their opinion if they ain't disrespectful or talking trash you could block them but i unblocked I don't know, probably a thousand people. I, y'all was really getting reckless with the blocking. I I didn't even realize that many people was blocked. You know what I'm saying? Y'all ain't got to block everybody, okay? I unblocked a lot of y'all. A lot of y'all, if you thought you, or if you was blocked, you can type. You might not be blocked no more. Outlaw24, I blocked you yesterday because you went and, and put in... Uh, this clown was live. Don't come in me and my page directing traffic over to these sucker niggas' pages. That's the shit that's going to get you blocked. So, Outlaw24, once I find you in that block list, I'm going to unblock you. I tried to put you on timeout, but it wouldn't let me, so I had to hit you with the block. You know what I'm saying? But I, I'm, I'm, I'm letting a lot of y'all loose. It's a lot of y'all that, that got free. Y'all back in the chat. You know, you know, my moderators, they do what they do, but I'm, I'm, I'm I unlaced a bunch of y'all. Another thing I want to address, another person I blocked, a white person. It was a white person in my comments that felt offended with me calling the white boy over there, white boy. I may have called him Kraken. You know what I'm saying? I may have called him Culture Vulture. But this is because on their channel, they're calling me all kinds of names. So if you've been around me long enough or you've been watching me long enough, because this person said, yo, Choke, I've been watching you for a year and you keep calling white people uh, Culture Vultures and this, that, and the other. 
you know, I've been following you for a year. I appreciate your support. I don't have no ill hatred towards white people. But when white people call me out my name, they're going to get the same goddamn treatment. If, they are, if they're a white person and all they do is talk about black culture, then they are culture vulture for me. If I, if I say Vlad's being a culture vulture, then that's what it is. If he's sitting up there disrespecting Dame Dash in our house, Vlad don't do interviews about Russian rappers. Vlad don't do interviews about Russian actors. Vlad don't do interviews about Russian drug dealers. Vlad don't do interviews about Russian murderers. Vlad don't do interviews to pit black, I mean, pit, pit Russian people against Russian people. He put us against us and then bring us up there again, talk about us. And then when that person leaves, he bring us up there to talk about us. Never was he talking about his own culture, his own people, or nothing. Everything that his show do is based around black and Latino culture. So if you're offended by me calling him a culture vulture, or this other punk calling him a white boy or a cracker because he's calling me out my name on his platform, ask me before you criticize me. Why I say that? Because I don't say all white people are crack. I sit here and support Trump. The fuck you talking about? And people get mad at me because I speak for Trump. Where am I racist? I ain't got to love all white people. But that don't mean that I hate all white people. I don't say shit about white people. But if you hear me talking about this motherfucking devil over on the other side, that's because they talking about me. So to any of y'all people out here that's non-black, please don't get offended when I call a motherfucking culture vulture or culture vulture. So if you want to start watching me because somebody called me out my name, and I'm re, uh, returning the favor. Stick up for your people then. But I'm not going to let no motherfucker disrespect me and call me out my name. Okay? So now that I got that clear, let's get to the show. Yeah, choke no joke, you know what it is. Learn from mistakes out right now on all platforms. This one right here is for the mixtape, let's go. Yo Nas, I ain't do this for clout. I'm just a real nigga trying to figure you out. How you don't put blood in this Judas mouth. Talking Japanese wine like you fanning out. Blushing at this bitch that disrespects your kid and her earth. Comment. I know that it hurt. You know, back then when he made these disparaging remarks and comments about my daughter and created this disgusting visual, there were so many people around him um, that stayed quiet. They said absolutely nothing. Comment. I know that it hurt. You said Pac left us. When rappers that wink at other rappers in the studio, which made me think, yo, what he got on you? And homie in pink, cause at Webster Hall, he didn't stream one link. Yo, y'all glad for punishment. I'm sick and I'm done with it. If it was part of your plan, I was hard my word on it. I'm just your fan. With little celebrity, some say it's just the hate in me. Nah, I'm cut from a cloth. You don't brush shit off. Well, the penthouse of law gotta have a ceiling. Only forgive hoes with sexual healing. And that thought right now is not appealing. 
with these chicks with the dicks like little Nas. X, I'm not a fan. You damaged your brand. Your Nas don't ever do that shit again. I'm signing off. S, go stand. Yeah. Choke, no joke. You know what it is. <laughs> you know what it is. Oh, yeah. And you, nigga, I ain't sorry for shit. I ain't with your boys, games. Nigga, I'm with the shit. Wedge. Webster Dictionary defines the word as a substance that is used for splitting wood or rocks. Something causing a breach or a separation. <laughs> it's funny what that lens can capture. Separation. Division. How y'all having a meeting about Jay without? I, nope, not drugs right there. Nobody told me nothing. How come y'all having a market meeting without Jay? Without, what about Jay? Without? I don't get it. It's 10.30 in the morning. And you want to get Leo? Please, go get him. No, actually, I was just going to go to the restroom. Okay, Why are you leaving? I'm asking a question. She doesn't have an answer. This so, is, this is, well, this I'm is, wondering, this with, with, with line of thought, is it, what pattern is it, John McNeely and all y'all, that y'all have my biggest artists here, and y'all in here, y'all Def Jam staff is dealing with Jay's marketing without me? We were Please ready. explain that to me. Cause this seems treacherous. And animosity. What you mean bullshit? The fuck? Y'all niggas having meetings about my artist without calling me? It ain't no bullshit. It ain't no bullshit. Man, look, oh y'all look, everybody here is ashamed of y'all. Who wants to work under a cow? We don't have to. I ain't cow. I ain't with your boys, games, nigga. I'm with this shit. I'm nothing like Nas. I'm with this shit. I'm more like jungle, wanting to bust your shit. But bro got me on chill. He said I'm Illmatic. Ha. With the static. Ha. With the ratchets. Yeah. Let's go to Brooklyn. Cause he gotta have it. School days. Would've called you faggot. And smoked you. Like a Spike Lee joint. Yo, the greatest of all timers. Yeah. Got hit with all timers. You buster. Nigga, your mic with the shine. Knockout. Knock yeah, one line is. Give you a reason to be a one eye without reasonable doubt. You been a liar. You headache came, jazz o inspired, rape Damon. So they trying to kick take it, they trying to take our franchise from. That's what they trying to do. Make this beef with they trying to I'm, I bet you they're staging this beef with us. Trust me. Trust me. It was all about the power to, you know, to get rid of Dame Dash you know, and, and take Jay-Z to the next level without Dame, you know? And it was, you know, D Dame should stop blaming Leo and, and, and Todd Moskowitz and stop blaming Steve Stout. You know about the, um, the Scarface party and all that? How they put the Demetrius house on in Puerto Rico? He's gonna be there performing, but doing something with them. Who, Jay? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no? Yeah. He's gonna be out there for that. With the, um, the, the release of the Scarface DVD. Jay's performing for that? And I don't need two lips to blow this like a trumpet, you dumb shit. This is an unusual musical. I conducted you looking at the black Warren Buffett so all critics can duck sick. I don't care if you see the Lawrence Tuckett or you Bill O'Reilly. You only rallied me up for three years. They had me peeing out in the cup. Now they about to free me up. What you think I'm going to be? What? Rehabilitated? Man, I still feel hatred. I'm young, black, and rich, so they want to strip me naked. But you never had me like Christina Aguilari. But catch me at the West Side driving like Halle Berry. Or the West. Fuck it. I'm piecing up, y'all. The black guy, I'm on the way. And then we doing our party, so. Stop taking I mean, uh... Steve Stout's direction. And what was Steve Stout telling you to do? He was, he orchestrated, he walked me through how to get rid, his plan was to get rid of Dame Dash. He told you that? That was the plan. Okay. <laughs> Rape Dame and Chris, then ran a liar through the rock in the fire. Woo! Damn you cold, built the nation, the prop back home. Are you the king of L.A.? When Cube is home, how you bang in LA? At when the nip is gone, Mr. Mr. Smith, yeah, I'm nice with the gift. Two, the double tundras got those two. Your wisdom, knowledge, that I'm king too. I'm sorry I met the other side of you. That's the gift and the curse. Mm -hmm. I'm Christ from birth, from the hearse to the dirt. Fake niggas claim hurt, so I stay on my bullshit like I'm dirt and never shy. Let my feelings fly, Let's go. cause we all die.
like your bitch. <laughs> Nigga, I'm here. Only fear I have is truth not be told. We all get old. It's choke, no joke. Y'all already know. Let's go. Choke, no joke. You already know. Learn from mistakes out right now on all platforms. This for the mixtape. The 50 year old platinum virgin. <laughs> Welcome to AMC Theater 11. Enjoy your show. Yo, Lee. Run the rail. on the gram, tell for what what they doing, <laughs> choke no joke, you know what it is, yo y'all niggas with a stay DL, down low, stop flossing man, what you, you, what you just, you just want them to just come and get you, learn from our mistakes man, that's what this is about, learn from mistakes, choke no joke, let's go, you already know, Make it low, let's go. My aim was enlightened, drop jewels on you. You thinking I'm jealous, I ain't got cheddar like you. I'm the dude to a game, you got school. Was a local cat, snatch you when I made moves. Yeah. I'm paranoid and preaching, you, you was sleeping. Knew you was sneak deep and couldn't see us beefing. Learn from mistake, no sure I got cake. Impress a nigga to rob me, bitch in my face. Get knocked by the fence, lay up four by eight. Ass so busy flossing, ain't thinking about Jake. Loose, yapping, they wiretapping, videotaping, your ways in action. Front like Tom's hard, two door garage, ice like Liberage, with no damn jaw, without a reasonable doubt. You think you Jay Z with your platinum jewelry? He got a job, B. You shining on doctors with four degrees. Laughing because I'm broke, I'm broke on the streets. Stay DL, BDL and Sal. You ain't DL when your name ain't Bell. For beef, we not dolo. For cash, you go solo. Thought I was your man, shot me down like Manolo. Thought I was your partner when you played me was whack. No niggas dust that I wouldn't flip like that. What gives? See your man struggle while you live? That's some shit. Struggling, give you the kicks. Used to stick for gooses. Warm when we pump deuces. Break night in the jacks, trying to see millions like Bruce. You don't act like you used to. I'm the dude. When niggas was friends, you like, yo, yo, yo. I wet you like McClain for those who claim to be pain. The game of death, that's what you get when got game. Ill with automatics, we never static. You carry that niggas, put one in your cabbage. Fear, don't have it, you fill me with laughter. In OG and C, they know a rich you gonna clap her. Like Dan Gadapper, see a mill be Casper. Like Dre the doctor, the math for math them. Say DL, DL is L. You ain't DL when your name ain't bad. With your pockets, cop the ice locket. Yeah. She's somewhere in Houston, you blew like a rocket. Her seed was bait, through the line she caught it. Gave her all that loot, but she couldn't afford it. Praying to them bitches, y'all feeling hell. Blue puff in your face, daddy, all about Benjamin. Remember me, I'm your friend. 
friend to the end. Like Shelton, used to slay bitches like Buffy. Thinking why they cuff me? Think of the luxuries you had. In the cell with other willies, you brag. I push the big bends with 20 year trims. Went in the club, piss for all my men. Sitting across the bar, what's up, star? Back to reality, you back in bars. You chose not to listen, had the age class glisten. Through the rules of the game, you played yourself on position. Stay the L, be the L is L. You ain't the L when your name ain't Bell. Stay the L, be the L is L. You ain't the L when your name ain't Bell. Stay the L, be the L is L. You ain't the L when your name ain't Bell. Yo, son, yo, son, yo. Sound the sun's me. Trees in the palms of dealers and fiends. Late night roam the streets. Weed is weaker, but it's cheaper. Not many chicks frying like divas. Out west, every chick's a model like Eva. And you know I'm far from believing her. So I'm g her like she g me. Banging in LA is a different thing. At the end, you either dead on the bang. Getting out, doing better things. On sunset, where they hang. Hollywood, where they hustle for change. Times Square here, it's the same. No matter where you go, you'll find a lane. On the west, they kick it with cane. On the east, trees, the souls you think. East Coast, West Coast, East Coast, West Coast. Grab your raps, roll it up. If you rap, West Coast, East Coast. West Coast, East Coast, West Coast. Grab your glasses, take a toast. If you rep East Coast. When I'm on the West and I'm doing my thing, no offer me coke or your nose I bang. Friends don't offer other deadly things. Thanks for the hospitality, we'll still hang. I won't judge you, leave me as I came. On the road to success, top of the game. Eat all the finer things in the food chain. Teach my kids to do the same Whether East Coast, West Coast East Coast, West Coast Grab your raps, roll it up If you rap, West Coast East Coast, West Coast East Coast, West Coast Grab your glasses, take a toast If you rap, East Coast Gotta love life, it all for wonderful things and the travel is a privileged thing Came back to the east, air wasn't fresh Streets with trash, various people in the ass It's easy to tell who's up a middle class Police and racism, same as crash Back to where they not social, where they less vocal When they don't know you, be careful Show you around the east coast, west coast East coast, west coast Grab your raps, roll it up If you rap East Coast, weather, East Coast, West Coast, East Coast, West Coast, pop your bottles and toss the cork, if you rep, West Coast. Both coasts are known to give you fame, got paparazzi's playing cameras your way, got you bobbing and weaving like Cassius Clay, most thugs turn Muslim in older days, change their name to a law they pray, probably till they decay. This go out to the east and west For Big and Pop, y'all, let's connect Rather east coast, west coast East coast, west coast Grab your raps, roll it up If you rep, west coast Rather east coast, west coast East coast, west coast You can't get the west without the ES So it's manifested that we connect Uh you know what it is. Choke, no joke. Learn from mistakes, baby. You know what it is. Greg on the track. Rest in peace, baby. Eat a wall, we in now. You know what it is. Choke, no joke. They counted me out, cause I didn't want to get down. <laughs>
They just talking about God there. What God? What God are you talking about? Say his name. This nigga went Eric Bene. Now the baddest girl won't show her face. You know your ass in the way when she show up to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And you ain't even say her name, lame. You better say Dame. In the streets, we call you Roadblock. Nigga, you shot. Nigga, you block rocks. Like when Chris was about to pop. Like MJ moonwalking like Spock. You abuse your power facts. You killed the thought that's black. Jay told me in no certain terms that, you know, no rapper can really afford to look bad in front of him. So mm. it's almost like huh. we got to blackball him. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Jay-Z for seeing the big picture here. <laughs> yeah, and it's it, it was a hard pill to swallow. Tariq, you kill the weeds, not the seeds that grow the trees. And as long as you alive, Dave should have a milli. Fuck you mean bleed. Nigga, don't get me started. You know I'm retarded and lying hearted. You flipped on your peeps for those peoples in them white sheets. Like you pro black. We pass nail and how you shit on cat. You know what you said? What? I, what? You know what you said? Um. Okay. I think we passed kneeling. <laughs> Nigga, you got the check. The pros went back, and that's no cap. Leaving cap with no salary cap. Your son said you his dad, and you never threw him a pass. Watching his siblings in the stands. Say lips, say no, say hands. You say the kid is not your son. They call you over. It must be immaculate conception. <laughs> Immaculate conception. <laughs> what? Joke, no joke. 2023. It's all me. You hear me? Choke dead. Choke dead. You already know what it is. Let's go. Yo, Kanye, you better stop playing with Jesus Christ, too. You get it next. Don't think we forgot about the devil in the red dress. You'll get dressed next. Yeah. I already smoked you once in quad. You'll get it too. Choke, no joke, Chiggy. Choke, no joke. Choke, no joke, Chiggy. Choke, no joke. What's good? What's good? One the building. Welcome back to all my people that was blocked. I, I unleashed at least a thousand of y'all that was blocked. Don't get blocked again. I know they say my moderators was trigger happy, so... I'm letting them know. Let y'all live. You know what I'm saying? Please. I don't, I don't want to kick nobody off with the wrench. Don't, don't. Be nice. Be fair. If they get disrespectful, let them go. Or I'll give you the hint to let them go. If we see a butthole coming here. I'm going to put a foot in a butthole. <laughs> so as y'all know we've been talking about Biggie and Tupac's murder for quite some time but More recently, let me get my Instagram going.
One second. Here we go. Hip Hop Black, what up? I'm live on YouTube. Link in my bio and in my stories if y'all want to join me over there. Jason, what up? Determined Mind, what up? If you are new to the channel, or you haven't subscribed yet, please show me some love and subscribe. Of course, you nothing but a push of a button. It's free. Now, I'm going to let y'all know. I'm tired and I'm hungry. I made me a Philly cheat chicken cheese steak, a Philly cheese steak, chicken cheese steak today. I actually made two and some fries. And as you can see, I already <laughs> ate one and wolfed down some fries while I was playing the music. That's why I was playing the music. So I could give me a little chance to get something in my stomach. You know, Simmons, what up? Um, because last night, I got information on the Biggie case and the Tupac case and the conspiracies to kill Biggie and Tupac from a very reliable source that wants to remain anonymous. Right? And you don't give up your sources anyway. But this source, <sighs> information that they gave me is all from real records. This ain't a bunch of speculations of no, these are the actual, and this is the actual investigation. Just like we went through a bunch of stuff yesterday. And it was blowing our mind. Tonight, it's going to be a movie in this mother effer. And like I said, I'm going to put the stuff on the screen so y'all can see it. So y'all can see that it ain't no cat. Y'all can see it, right? Now, you know I don't have a college education. I did go to college for somewhat of one year, right? So sometimes I butcher some words. I ain't, I'm not saying I am a professor and I'm not gonna butcher some words. If I do, just correct me. Teach one, each one teach one, all right? But in the last show, I, I think I got about two words wrong. Somebody hit me up and told me. <laughs> well, the pronunciation was wrong, which is fine. As long as you know what the hell I'm talking about, and it don't even matter because I got it on the screen so y'all can read for yourself. So if I pronounce it wrong, just bear with a brother, okay? I didn't go to Howard, Harvard, or any of those. I'm not saying I'm the best, but for me, I have no shame. I wouldn't put it on the screen if I was ashamed that I can't pronounce certain words. I'll be saying where you can't see it and trying to read it. But like I said, that doesn't matter. We about to get into this.
Thank you very much, Shay. I appreciate you. Okay, let's start with this one. Okay, do I want to start with this one? Let me. Oh, you know what? We're going to start with the other one first. This is going to F y'all heads up, boy. Whew. All right, I'm going to start with this one because this one is short. We go. So, the reason I'm calling this the ghost of Russell Poole is because Russell Poole was the first detective on this case trying to solve this homicide. And he got brushed off he got laughed at he got ostracized by the LAPD because when he realized that it was cops involved in this whole conspiracy to kill Biggie and then he went deeper and got into the Tupac shit and found out that possibly or allegedly it was cops involved in the Biggie case and the Tupac case. This made things bad for the LAPD because the LAPD had just lost, uh, had to pay out a lot of money to people because of the Rampart scandal, which involved LAPD cops. Well, some of the same cops that was involved in the Rampart scandal was allegedly, I got to say allegedly, because nobody got arrested yet, uh, involved in the Tupac and Big E murder. Now, I know y'all saying Tupac. No, Tupac got killed by Keefe D. Keep that thought. <laughs> Right, Chad Jordan, what up? So tonight, I'm dedicating this show to Russell Poole to let him know that he didn't die in vain. And after almost 30 years, his investigation has came to light. Thanks to the fact that Wedgie stays on the internet and keep running his mouth and changing his goddamn stories. But according to Russell Poole's evidence, Reggie Wright is a dangerous 
Reggie Wright Jr., I am senior probably too, but for Junior, this nigga is a dangerous individual. He sit up here and act like, you know, he, you know, he ain't scary or nothing. But I think the people in Compton in LA, they know a different Reggie that we know that be on YouTube and this, that, and the third. Right? When y'all see the information that you about to see, Russell Poole did a hell of investigation. And at this point, I think they killed his ass too. Because he revealed way too much shit. Way too much. And going to the, the police to bring them this evidence, when they trying to cover up, cover up the evidence, I believe that they did something to him to uh for him to lose his life. You're gonna learn in this information that even Harry O, oh, they tried to kill Harry O in jail. You're gonna find out that Suge fired Reggie after the goddamn Tupac shooting. I think we found that out yesterday. A lot of people didn't know that. Or maybe you're going to find that out tonight. I don't know, maybe because I was talking to a few people. But Suge let Reggie go after the Tupac situation because Suge know who tried to kill him. So he didn't trust the police no more. He just only had the cops. I mean, the gangbangers. But we're going to get into all that. Please share this video. Please share this video. Please share this video. Please. Especially if you know anybody in Tupac or Biggie's family or close to them. Please share this with them. Please hit the like button so the notifications could go out so niggas could see that I'm on. Please. This right here. If I was a scary nigga, I wouldn't read this. That's how ill these niggas is. Wait till y'all see this. Yo, bro. I'm going to get into it. This is going to blow your mind. Let's go. Rest in peace, Russell Poole. I hope you're watching. This one goes out to you. Ah, oh, this fucking picture won't come up. Ah. Yeah, don't worry. Don't worry. Is it? Wait a minute. Let me see something. Okay, these pictures ain't here. But I got video, so I'll show y'all the video. After. All right. So, okay, here we go. <laughs> Ooh, baby. Wait till you see this. Here we go, y'all. I'm putting it on the screen so y'all can see. I'll reach out to him, Chad. Okay. What did Russell Poole take to the meeting with the sheriffs? Michael Douglas calling, right? Edit this, right? What did Doug, uh, Russell? What did Russell Poole take to the sheriffs that day? First thing, as y'all can see,
trying to see which way is the best way to do this. All right, I'll do it like this. Is that big enough for y'all? Let me see how I look on the screen. Yeah, depending on how big your screen is, how you're watching this, you should be able to see it. All right. Um, you know what? I I don't have to be this goddamn big. All right, let's go. All right, so what did Russell Poole take to the sheriffs that day? First and foremost, this picture won't come up, right? But you see a photo of Reggie Wright Sr. at the MGM Grand interrogating Orlando Anderson. Russell took this on his cell phone. I'm going to show y'all that video later. I got I got that on a whole nother joint right so this puts reggie rice senior in vegas at the mgm grand the night tupac had the fight right so reggie father was there right <laughs> out of his jurisdiction <laughs> Interrogate Orlando Anderson. <laughs> Yo, do y'all understand what I'm saying? Reggie Farmer is interrogating Orlando Anderson at the MGM Grand, bro. After the Tupac fight. You know that Reggie Farmer don't work for, for LAPD, right? Y'all do know that, right? Y'all know his father don't work for Vegas PD, right? So why is he interrogating this man all the way in Vegas, four hours away from LA? Just keep that thought in mind. Shill's attorney reaches out. On July 14, 2015, Michael Collin received the following email from Thaddeus Culpepper to Michael. Hello, I am one of Suge Knight's criminal defense attorneys. I got your letter from my co-counsel, Tom Miserio, whatever his name is. Read your letter with read your letter with great interest. Please contact me. Thaddeus. All right, that's July 14th. 2015. And this is, remember, this is Suge's attorney reaching out, right? Not David Kenner, right? Tom and I read your letter with great interest. We just got off the telephone with Suge Knight. Tom read your letter and your Tupac murder facts to Suge in his jail cell. Suge Knight said, who the fuck is these guys and how do they know all of this? I never thought of any of this information would become public. All right, y'all heard what Suge say, right? Suge says, who the fuck is these guys and how do they know all of this? I never thought any of this information would become public. I was silent. Thad, short for Thaddeus, Thad broke the silence by saying, Suge Knight verified that all of this is true. 
Russell Poole also called Thaddeus and verified that Suge Knight stated it was all true. Y'all hear this, right? Here's the information on Tupac's murder. Russell Poole arranged for Michael Carlin to meet with respected Fox 11 journalist Chris Blatchford on March 6, 2014 to discuss the confession letter to the murder of rapper Tupac Shakur that Blatchford received in 1998 from one of the alleged shooters. This is 98, y'all. This is just two years after. At that meeting, Blatchford discussed his interactions with the two of the shooters, one of which was supposed to take out Suge Knight. A copy of the letter was given to Carlin. Blatchford forwarded to Russell Poole a statement about the letter and additional information he had received from the shooters and confidential informant. This clue, along with all of the corroborating evidence, gives us the best chance to solve this murder and bring the killers to justice. Victims. Marion Suge Knight. You see, you notice it's a victim, not suspect. So they not accusing Suge of getting this hit done on Pac. Right? The hit was supposed to go down at the club. The target of the hit at the club was Suge Knight. Malcolm said he was the shooter that was supposed to take out Suge Knight. A bounty was put on Tupac at night. A, a, a bounty was put on Tupac and Knight, meaning Suge Knight. Kathy has determined that there are three separate hit contracts on Suge Knight's life. Kathy also indicated that the Rolling 60s and Bounty Hunter Kill Squad from the Compton area have indicated that Suge would be taken out before Christmas. It was also related by Kathy that the reality of Suge being killed and Tarzana was extremely high due to the fact that Suge is an easy target at death row records. Other victim, Tupac Shakur. Little Half Dead was supposed to kill Tupac. Little Half Dead was the one that Tupac, that took Tupac out. A bounty was put on, on Tupac and Knight. As you can see, all these have numbers on them. These numbers are reference numbers, right? Motive for killing Tupac and, and Suge. Revenge is the motive, right? The shooter, Little Half Dead, that killed Shakur, had a revenge motive. Little Half Dead is Snoop Dogg's cousin. Death Row had become recouping against Snoop's $5 million legal bill. That The victory had been financed entirely on Suge's down work to legally justify the label's position and ceasing to pay Snoop while it collected against the debt did not claim the label's only remaining marquee superstar. As a result, the sentiment between the two parties grew all the more sour as months passed. Knight had a falling out with Snoop Doggy Dog. There was tension between Tupac and Snoop Dogg's entourages. Days before the shooting, Snoop had a severe falling out with both Suge and Tupac in New York. At one point, Snoop actually feared for his own life on the flight. Little Abdead and Tupac had a dispute about songs that were taken. Little Abdead was beaten down by Tupac soldiers, which were what, be the outlaws maybe? Little Abdead was upset with Tupac because Tupac stole one of his songs. Very deliberate in his own. Um, um, had he been wildly shooting, 
he would have been able to shoot Mr. Knight as well as being a larger target. He definitely knew who he was shooting. There was no hesitation. The, count, the gun came out, and it was pop, 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 as soon as the arm came out. Brent Becker asked Yafoo Fula, a.k.a. Gaddafi, why the shooter would want to do this. His answer was jealousy. He further stated the shooter's arm was dark black. Money. The shooter that was hired to take out Suge Knight had the financial motive of a cashier's check for 100000 Danny was paid 100000 for the hit in the form of a cashier's check. Money, prestige, and power. The conspirators who ordered the hit had a financial motive of hundreds of millions of dollars. The shares of the Death Row Records and Tupac's music, as well as being tired of Suge Knight's antics, Wright wanted rights to all Tupac's material. That would be Reggie Wright. The means, guns. There were shooters, spotters, and conspirators. Three guns were used, Tech 9, 45, and a Glock. Frank Alexander says, all I saw was the arm and the gun, and right away I knew it was a Glock automatic. As for gun that was used, will be dropped off at a security booth at Fox 11. Please do not have stop or talk to any or talk to one of my dropping off the gun. Please do not have or talk to one of my dropping off the gun. I talked to Malcolm on the telephone and we set up a meeting. He said he would bring one of the murder weapons and wanted to do an on-camera interview to protect itself. The letter also said that Malcolm would drop off one of the murder weapons at KKK TV, I mean, KTTV Studios. Tell XCon how you want, tell XCon how you want it delivered. I don't want to put it in a box because I don't want you thinking it's a bomb. When I returned to the station, security told me a young black man had tried to drop off a package for me at the guard shack. Company policy pro prohibited them from accepting it. According to Kevin Hackey, the gun was used to kill Tupac Shakur was a Glock 40 that was confiscated by an off-duty Santa Monica police officer during a routine search at the House of Blues by Hussein Fatal, one of Tupac outlaws on July 4th, 1996, when he was detained attempting to enter the venue with his Glock 40. In late July, Reggie Wright contacts Kevin Hackey and asks him to keep tabs on the weapon. The off-duty Santa Monica officer takes the gun back to Santa Monica Police Station. The gun was then Ballistic tested by the FBI and run to see if the weapon was stolen or had been used in any crimes. There were no ballistics match at the time, so the FBI sends the weapon back to the Santa Monica police. Sometime in August of 1996, Santa Monica police contacted Kevin Hackey and tell him the gun is clear for pickup. Hackey, who was working undercover for the FBI, and ATF retrieves the gun and takes it to his handlers. They clear him to release the gun to Reggie Wright Jr. Hacky hands the gun to Reggie Wright Jr. Subsequently, I know I'm pronouncing it jacked up. Subsequently, the Glock 40 is used to kill Rapper Tupac Shakur. Y'all heard that, right? The same gun 
that Fadu had is the same gun that killed Tupac. Y'all see that? The House of Blues, Hussein Fatal, one of Tupac's outlaws, on July 4th, 1996, when he is detained, attempted to enter the venue with his Glock 40. Reggie contacts Kevin Hackey and asks him to keep tabs on the weapon. The off-duty Santa Monica officer takes the gun back to the Santa Monica police station. The gun, everybody, FBI do the test on it. It ain't got, it's not dirty. They give it back. Boom, 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 boom. Kevin Hackey, uh, police call Kevin Hackey and tell him the gun is clear for pickup. Hackey, who is working undercover for the FBI ATF, retrieves the gun and takes it to his handlers. They clear him to release the gun to Reggie Wright Jr. Hackey hands the gun to Reggie Wright Jr. Sub, sub, <laughs> It's a tongue twister for me. Sub C. <laughs> Fuck it. The Glock 40 is used to kill rapper Tupac Shakur. The white Cadillac. The CIA said the hit team trio had rented a pearl white Cadillac at the Stratosphere Hotel, Las Vegas, and later dumped it at a salvage yard in Baker. Disassembled. And the girl said, the, uh, remember yesterday in the girl's statement, they said the, 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 the Cadillac had Vegas tags. Right? Witness Hart stated that the white car was to their right and in front of them. So she was able to see the rear of the car. Hart feels that the white car had Nevada license plates. Oh, that's the statement from yesterday. Yeah. White and blue and felt the car was possibly a rental. Hart thinks the shooting came from the driver's side of the white car and that there was four occupants. Turner felt the Cadillac had Nevada Rare license plates. That's the other witness with the possible number 647. Turner thought that the occupants of the white Cadillac may have been shooting from both sides of the car. Radios. While working at 662, I heard something over the next tells. This is uh, Michael Moore. I heard something over the next tells where we were carrying. And what I heard was got him. The voice was definitely one of our security that works directly for Mr. Knight. Maybe the police should have concentrated more on death row, the next tone, the next tell phone bills, and other things that could have helped them investigate in more depth. I would definitely look more at death row than I would look at Mr. Anderson, and that it is what I gathered when I was at New York when I heard Pop tell Suge Knight. And what I heard on the radio that night after the shots were fired. Right before me and Mr. Wright got into the vehicle to go to the hospital, someone else came on the radio and said, hey, don't say nothing over the radio. Mr. Wright and I were talking about what happened. And I clearly heard someone say, don't say nothing over the radio. But the person that said it was not homeboy security nor was it one of the security guards to me he was a stranger but the person that said it was caucasian definitely not african-american <coughs> a radio significant be, a radio significant because it implies that there were spotters as well as shooters this also makes this just like the biggie smalls murder he Noel Johnson, a.k.a. Big Spank, just spoke on them that you know he got them. Opportunity. The opportunity was created on the fight night in Las Vegas where, 
where every detail was being controlled by Reggie Wright Jr., the head of death row security. This was a coup. I don't know what that is. Coup diat. I don't know what the hell that is. Let's see what that is. What does that mean? A sudden, violent, and unlawful seizure of power from a government. Coup d'etat. Coup d'etat. Coup d'etat. A sudden, violent, and unlawful seizure of power from a government. A coup. Coup d'etat. Got it. Coup d'etat at death row. Wait. Reggie Wright Jr., the head of death row security. This was a coup d'etat at death row records orchestrated by insiders at the record label. They tried to kill Suge Knight that night. And they have been conspiring against him ever since. He, CI, says it was Wright who, on the night of Tupac's murder, told the killers where Tupac would be, along with Suge. There were there were six different barricades that no matter that would have happened, no one would have made it out. The car is barricaded by three cars. On the left, one in the front, one in the back, and the shooter's car completes the six bar six barricade. Jurisdiction. The conspiracy started at Death Row Records, located in Los Angeles County, California. The confession letter talks about me and at Balboa Park that is located in Los Angeles Ca County, California. The actual shooting took place in Las Vegas, Nevada. Suspects. <clears throat> Little Half Dead, AKA Donald Smith, is the cousin of rapper Snoop Doggy Dog. Little Half Dead was the one that took Tupac out. Malcolm Greenridge said, he saw a dark-skinned man with the black gun fire from the white Cadillac. I think Malcolm Green, Green was, was Idi Amin, if I'm not mistaken, from yesterday. Um, I think it was. All right, let's double check. Let's be sure. Yeah, that's Idi Amin, right? Okay. So Idi Amin said he saw a dog skin on with a black gun fired from the white Cadillac. Ludo Half Dead and Tupac had a dispute about songs that were taken. Ludo Half Dead was beaten down by Tupac soldiers. Ludo Half Dead was upset with Tupac because Tupac stole one of his songs. Very deliberate. And his own... Um, um, had been wildly shooting, he would have been able to shoot Mr. Knight as well as they repeating this, 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 this. Ludo Avde was represented by Suge Knight and Death Row Records and his contract was sold off to Priority Records. And he was sponsored mostly by I don't know what the fuck that supposed to be. Knight, Suge Knight? I don't know. What Knight did not know was that Little Half Dead found out he was being sold to Priority. On Little Half Dead album cover for Dead Serious, you can see the image of the slain Tupac Shakur at Can-Am Studios 
along with the slain Yak Fula, Snoop Dogg calls Little Half Dead his enforcer. Death Row, I don't know if, if any of y'all even seen that shit, right? Look at this fucked up shit. Watch this. How many of y'all ever saw Little Half Dead's album cover for Dead Serious? Why would he do this to Tupac? Can y'all see that? Look, Tupac right here murdered. Shot up. He got him on the board. And he got Fatal over here murdered with his fucking brains blown out. I guess this who this Biggie over here? Can y'all see that? This nigga killed Tupac and Fatal. I don't know who this other person is. How many of y'all know about that? He got Pog dead in, in, in the Death Row Studios, bro. And got Fatal over there with a bullet in his head. Let me pull out the screen up so y'all can see it. Instagram, y'all can Google uh, Ludo Half Dead Dead Serious. You can see it yourself. Oh, matter of fact, I can show y'all. Hold on. Look. They go Tupac. They go Fatal. That's Little Half Dead. And I don't know, this might be Biggie. I don't know who this is supposed to be. And this Snoop cousin. Like, if Snoop had love for Pac, he wouldn't have let him do that shit. I mean, Gaddafi. That's Gaddafi, right? I get these niggas' names mixed up, so please bear with me. It's a lot. All right, so Yak Fula, Yak Fula's Gaddafi, right? Is that right? Okay, so on Ludo Half Dead's album cover for Dead Series, you can see the image of slain Tupac Shakur at Can Am Studios, along with the slain Yak Fula. Snoop Dogg's Snoop Dogg calls Ludo Half Dead his enforcer. Death Row had begun recouping against Snoop's five million dollar legal bill. That the victory had been financed entirely on Shug's down work to legally justify the label's position in ceasing to pay Snoop while they collected against the debt did not calm the label's only remaining marquee superstar. As a result, the sentiment between the two parties grew all more sour as months passed. Now he had a falling out with Snoop Doggy Dog. There was tension between Tupac and Snoop entourages days before the shooting Snoop had a severe falling out 
with both Suge and Tupac in New York. At one point, Snoop actually feared for his life on the flight as he was stripped of all his bodyguards. In an interview with Snoop and Little Had Dad with AllHipHop.com, we learned Snoop, like Dr. Dre, I don't let niggas talk about it. Like Dr. Dre, I don't let niggas talk bad about Dr. Dre. I could talk bad about him, but y'all can't. Little Abdad says, and the cold part about it is, I wouldn't let nobody talk bad about Dre just because Snoop love him. Snoop, better not. It don't matter. Laker fans, Raider fans, Whoever you niggas is, you ride with them to the fullest. If a nigga disrespect your peoples, you feel disrespected. This is my homie half dead right here. A nigga can't say nothing foul about Snoop Dogg in front of him. In jail, on the street, no matter where he at, I don't give a fuck if we ain't cool. A nigga can't say nothing. White boy, a.k.a. Danny Patton, I shot that Tupac motherfucker. I was there, man. One name, and I heard the name. Uh, I don't know if it was Gangster White or it was something along that line. I clearly heard someone say, don't say nothing over the radio. But the person that said it was not homeboy security, nor was it one of our security guards. To me, it was a stranger. Remember, these numbers is all like this ain't no straight statement. These are just bullet points in the case, right? That's why they all got numbers on them. What I'm getting ready to do next is give you all this in the sequence. Right now, I'm just giving you bullet points so you can know what to look for when I give you the whole other stuff and you get. Here you get to hear some of it, right? But the person that said it was not homeboy security, nor was it one of the security guards, to me, he was a stranger. But the person that said it was Caucasian, definitely not African-American. The driver was bald with a little mustache. That sounds like Kevin Mack. Uh, the driver was bald with a little mustache and light skin, but not as light skin as Gaddafi. He said the driver had the face of a bitch because he looked soft in the face. Number 52, Danny's gun jammed. Malcolm Patton, I could call you on a safe number and give you details of the clothing, cars, streets, and describe anything you need to know to prove that I was there. The night Tupac tried to escape like a little pee, pee on bitch. The person Turner saw seated right from the passenger was described as a male black, light brown skin, short hair, cut low in his 20s, possible late 20s. Malcolm said he Michael said he was the shooter that was supposed to take out Suge Knight. Malcolm shot twice and missed his target. Conspirators. Reggie Wright Jr. He told me that Sharita Knight and Reggie Wright Jr. were behind the murder. Mr. Who's Mr. Riff? Mr. Wright Jr. Gave info where Tupac was going to be. He said it was Wright who, on the night of Tupac's murder, told the killers where Tupac would be, along with Shug. That wouldn't that make more sense, y'all? If them niggas got into a fight, Pac went to the hotel to change. Shug went home to change. Some niggas went with Shug, and then. These niggas know exactly where they at to pull up on these niggas. After all that, them niggas went home, changed, showered up, and all that stuff and shit. These niggas supposed to rode around, oh, Tupac, Tupac, and just, just found these niggas. Fuck out of here. 
He said it was right who on the night of Tupac's murder told the killers where Tupac would be along with Shook. Michael Moore tells of hearing got him come over Reggie's radio while he was standing next to him at Club 662. Reggie Wright was responsible. Reggie Wright was responsible for disarming all of the security on the night Tupac was shot. It was all Reggie's fault. It wasn't even something where you could debate it. Every decision came from Reggie's mouth. Every decision came from Reggie's mouth. Reggie Wright Jr. is seen in the MGM surveillance video walking with the woman, possibly Sharita Knight, and then shaking hands with Orlando Anderson and leading him away. <laughs> And I got that video. And we got the video. We got the video. <laughs> and we got the video. We got the video. Reggie Wright Jr. is seen in the MGM surveillance video, walking with a woman, possibly Sharita Knight, and then shaking hands with Orlando Anderson and leading him away. Sharita Knight, even though Suge and Sharita had become estranged, she did stand to inherit his shares if he was killed. She was on the paper. He told me that Sharita Knight and Reggie Wright were behind the murders. Murder. Possible co-conspirators. Kevin Gaines, who was dating Sharita Knight. Kevin Gaines was on a special assignment from two days before the Tupac murder until two weeks after. He was in Las Vegas on the night Tupac was killed. <laughs> What's the chances of that, y'all? David Kenner. The CI says David Kenner was at the gang summit in Balboa Park, and that he is on videotape when Reggie Wright Jr. contracted the hit. Reggie Wright Sr. Reggie Wright Sr. tells Michael Moore his son will run the company if something happened to show. Also, Reggie Wright Sr. is watching Orlando Anderson be interrogated by MGM security and the Las Vegas police immediately after the altercation with Suge Knight. Tupac Shakur and their honorage. Reggie Rice Sr. participated in investigation at the Compton PD. Did y'all know Reggie and his father was in the MGM grant? I'm gonna show you the video. Did y'all know that Reggie and his father was at that MGM grant and kicking it to Orlando Anderson? Reggie Rice Sr. participated in the investigation at the Compton PD. Members of ICG, Gear Gang, Ghost Town, Front Street, 52, A Tri, Hoover's, and South Park. There was a gang summit in Balboa Park. The gangs were in attendance. The, gang, the gangs in attendance included ICG equal Long Beach and Sane Crip Gang. Gear Gang, West Adams District of South LA, Ghost Town, Crips, and Venice, Front Street, Watts, Crips, 52, Five Deuce at the 52nd Street and South Broadway, A Tri, A Tri Hoovers, A Tri Hoovers equal A Tri Hoovers, 83rd Hoovers. In South Park, 51st Street in Avalon. The CI, different gangs. No, the CI says at first there was a get together in Balboa Park in the San Fernando Valley. 
in the San Fernando Valley for different games. This was disguised as a Bloods Crip Truce meeting, but it was really a filler for Wright to see how much it would take to get Tupac hit. Wright wanted the rights to all Tupac's material. Those not in on the plan that night were sent to the 662 Club in Las Vegas. Facts behind the murder of Tupac, she called, written by Russell Poole and Michael Douglas Collin. This was given to the DA's office by Russell and Michael prior to Russell's death. See. So all these you know, all the stuff that I read to y'all was different came from different sources, right? So now here, here goes everything put together. This is the good part. Okay. Oh, I want to take this shirt off because I'm burning up. Okay. I 
I tell you, this is the good part. This is where everything changed. Now, this is Russell Poole's whole investigation right here. Y'all can see that? Yeah, y'all can see it. All right, cool. All right, the crime. On September 7, 1996, Suge Knight was driving a BMW in Las Vegas with Tupac Shakur in the passenger seat. A white Cadillac pulled up alongside the car, and 13 bullets were fired all over the car. Tupac was struck multiple times, and the bullet lodged, lodged in his lung. Tupac Shakur died on September 13, 1996, from wounds sustained from the crime. Jurisdiction. The shooting occurred in Las Vegas. Las Vegas is the uh, assumed jurisdiction. If there was a conspiracy to kill Tupac, then the jurisdiction is where the conspiracy began. Death Row Records was headquartered in Los Angeles County. So if the conspiracy occurred in the LA County, then Los Angeles police, sheriffs, and the DA's office have clear jurisdiction. Evidence of conspiracy. Evidence examined includes the records, of, the records from the Tupac and Biggie LAPD investigation, the death row records bankruptcy filings, the Christopher Wallace estate civil trial against the city of Los Angeles for wrongful death, secret tape recordings, made by bodyguard Frank Alexander in immediate after math in the immediate aftermath of the of the Shakur shooting FBI release files wait till y'all see these various other files audio and video recordings and a confession letter ran in 1998 that was given to Fox 11 journalist Chris Blatchford number 1 Reggie Wright disarmed all security guards on the night of the shooting. This was a break from the normal protocol when guarding artists in Las Vegas. Number two, Michael Moore refused the order and insisted on carrying his weapon. He was removed from guarding Tupac and was ordered to Sick Club 662 where he was to stay close to Reggie Wright. I think this video is the one with Michael Mike, uh, uh, Michael Moore's uh, interview uh, talking about the uh, walkie-talkie. Michael Moore spoke of standing next to Reggie, Reggie Wright Jr. in front of Club 662 at the time of the shooting and hearing, got him coming over the radio. A radio is significant because it implies that they were spotters as well as shooters. This also makes this just like the Biggie Smalls murder. See below, listen, especially from 3, 340 on. They removed this video, somebody, all right? Four, M, probably refers to got him. Um, M got him. M is probably refers to both Tupac Shakur and Suge Knight. With 13 shots being fired, the shooters probably really thought they got him. The shooting was an immediate failure. Tupac wasn't killed, and Suge was only hit by a bullet fragment. Number five. Bodyguard Frank Alexander was told to lie about the Orlando Anderson incident by Reggie Wright Jr. He told investigators that Orlando had grabbed Tupac's chain earlier in the evening, breaking the chain. 
that incident morphed into the Orlando Anderson chain grab narrative at the Lakewood Mall. Frank Alexander Kane claimed with Las Vegas investigators, and when he told the Las Vegas, I mean, when he told, wait, Frank Alexander Kane claimed with Las Vegas investigators, and he was told by the Los Angeles DA's office and Death Row Records Associates that his life was now in danger. Those conversations were secretly recorded by Frank Alexander. We have copies of these recordings. According to the Biggie Small civil trial, Reggie Wright is a suspect in the murder of Christopher Wallace, a.k.a. Biggie Smalls, a.k.a. the Notorious Big. Y'all knew that? According to the Biggie Small civil trial, Reggie Wright is a suspect in the murder of Christopher Wallace, a.k.a. Biggie, a.k.a. the Notorious B.I.G. According to, to the Biggie Small civil trial, Reggie Wright is a suspect in the murder of Christopher Wallace, a.k.a. Biggie Smalls, a.k.a. the Notorious Big. Now it makes sense where the Poochie story come from and all this. He's a suspect. Reggie Wright Jr. shows up at every one of the interviews of Death Row Records Insiders by Las Vegas Police. Brent Becker interview from the Tupac assassination. Assassination. Okay, that's a link to Tupac assassination. You can see that that information if you go watch that documentary, right? Okay. Number eight. Reggie Wright Jr. reveals that off-duty LA police, LAPD police worked for right way security on death row records assignments, Reggie Wright and Reggie Wright's deposition. David Kenner rented. David Kenner rented home of Larry Longo through Frank Longo, Larry's son. Kenner then moved Suge Knight into the home, setting up a clear conflict of interest. Larry Longo is fired but cleared of any wrongdoing. The maneuver was clearly orchestrated by Kenner to set Suge's probation violated in a way that judges abhor. abhor? I don't know what that word means. I got to look it up. Abhor means regard with disgust and hatred. Oh, regard with disgust and hatred. The maneuver was clearly orchestrated by Kenner to set up Shug's probation, violated in a way that judges abhor, which is regard with disgust and hatred. Shug's probation violated in a way that judges. This incident sealed Shug's fate, and he was sentenced to nine years in prison. Ten pieces of evidence. Chuck Phillips wrote about a conflict of interest with Larry Longo putting the final nails in Shug Knight's probation violation. Who is Larry Longo? I believe we got to look this thing up. Hold on. I don't know who that is. Larry Longo. Larry Longo is dead. 
Well, it could be a different one. I don't know. A oh, former deputy DA. Why would David Kenner have Suge Knight stand in a motherfucking a, de a DA's house? Why would he send him into a dude? Oh, these niggas lying Suge right the fuck up, bro. Oh, and he signed his daughter. He signed that dude's daughter to a record deal. They set this nigga up, bro. Wow. Holy shit. Yo, this nigga had this nigga stand at a DA's house, bro. This incident sealed Shug's fate, and he was sentenced to nine years in prison. Chuck Phillips wrote about the conflict of interest with Larry Longo putting the final nails in Shug Knight's probation violation. It is clear in the aftermath of the Tupac and Suge shooting on September 7, 1996, that Suge Knight no longer trusted Reggie Wright to handle his security. He uses his homeboys instead, a fact that Reggie Wright conveys through Kevin Lewis. To LAPD senior. Lee Ken Knox. Using convicted felons as security was a violation of Shook's probation. Reggie Wright also tells Knox directly that Shook had been traveling out the country. Another probation violation. Reggie is trying desperately to get Shook's probation revoked from Knox's detailed notes. Who's a snitch, Reggie? <laughs> Yo, let's think of Reggie is a dirty man. The boy dirty man. What's up, blood clot? Yo, him and Kenna, they lined this nigga shook up, bro. Whoa. Number 12. David Kenna bungled Shook's probation hearing, sealing Shook's fate, and being incarcerated. When they couldn't kill Shook, they conspired to send him away. Number 13, Christopher Wallace, a.k.a. Biggie Smalls, is murdered on the Los Angeles street. The murder is committed to further galvanize the East Coast, West Coast feud and throw investigators off of the trail of the actual murderers and the Tupac Shakur murders. The murder may have also been used by right to get back into Sugar's grace. Poor Biggie. Poor Biggie, yo. They just killed Big for nothing, bro. They just killed Big for nothing, bro. Christopher Wiles, a.k.a. Biggie Smalls, is murdered on Los Angeles Street. The murder is committed to further galvanize the East Coast, West Coast feud and throw investigators off on the trail of the actual murderers and the Tupac murders. The murder may have also been used by right to get back into sure good graces. Experience modification for Tupac's murder to Biggie's murder. Experience modification from Tupac's murder to Biggie's murder. Gang kids used for Tupac's murder with regular ammo and a wide pattern of bullets. Biggie's murder used a professional assassin with armored pier piercing ammunition and a tight pattern with almost same drive-by tactics. See below. Detective Russell Poole met with 
resistance inside of LAPD to fully investigate the murder of Christopher Wallace and to fully investigate the corruption of Officer Kevin Gaines by department leadership. He later is pulled off the case and reassigned and eventually pushed out of the apartment. His reports on the incidents are gutted and much of the information disappears along with Frank Lager's personal package. Controversial detective Frank Lager said he once threat threatened to reveal to the media that his 1997 shooting of fellow cop Kevin Gaines was a sanctioned hit on Gaines by LAPD. According to a memo purported to be written by LAPD officer to assist Chief Earl Paysinger document a talk Lager gave to LA Police Academy late last year, LA Weekly. So they killed this motherfucker too? Oh, shit. Holy shit. So, if y'all remember the scene and uh, unsolved when the white cop pulls up on Kevin Gaines and he flashed the gang signs and shit or flash the gun and he chase him and, and they get down and they go into the uh, gas station and they do that shooting and Lager kills Kevin Gaines. He's saying that that LAPD Paid him to kill him. Is that what I'm saying? Read it. Here. Controversial detective Frank Lager said he once threatened to reveal to the media that his 1997 shooting of fellow cop Kevin Gaines was a sanctioned hit on Gaines by LAPD. And that's why Kevin Gaines got paid. He got paid. His family got paid for his death, too. This is some crazy ass shit. According to a memo purported to be written by LAPD officer to Assistant Chief Earl Paysinger, document a talk Lager gave at the LA Police Academy late last year yeah, that's in la weekly reggie wright jr was second in command at death row records and ended up running record label after suge knight was incarcerated by maneuvering himself into that position the chaos at death row records that begun began october 22nd when suge is arrested and put in jail ends when wright is put in charge Hmm. Ken Knox, senior, senior lead, details in a police report that New Jersey Crips and Los Angeles Bloods are together in Death Row's Can-Am Studios together a few weeks before Yacht Fuller is assassinated in New Jersey. David Kenner is contacted by Las Vegas police to arrange the interview of Yacht Fuller. Kenna never arranges the interview and Fuller is killed before Las Vegas investigators can find him on their own. Now, why wouldn't David Kenna take that's Gaddafi, right? Yak Fuller 
to do a composite, to do a sketch like Little C's and them did with the uh in the uh the Biggie joint. Why wouldn't he want him the, him to go and talk to Vegas police? He already gave him a statement. So why didn't they? Why would David Ken is contacted by Las Vegas police to arrange the interview of Yak Fuller? Kenner never arranges the interview, and Fuller is killed before Las Vegas investigation can find him on their own. Murders in the immediate aftermath of Tupac Shakur's murder were those affiliated, witnesses, or with knowledge of the murder. Yak Fuller was an assassination hit, and Death Row Records were the first to call it a suicide. We have the tapes of telephone calls between Frank Alexander and various death row insiders about this murder. Also, we have the FBI report that states this was an execution murder. See below. Murders before Suge was released from prison were those who were Suge's in the circle. To weaken Suge from putting together muscle to retaliate upon his release. Evidence number 19. According to Kevin Hackey, the gun used to kill Tupac and Shakur was a Glock 40 that was confiscated by a North Duty Santa Monica police officer during a routine search at the House of Blues of Hussein Fatal, one of the Tupac's outlaws. See Reggie Wright disposition below. The gun was ballistics tested by the FBI before being released to Kevin Hackey, who subsequently, I said it wrong, sub, sub, subsequently gave the gun to Reggie Wright Jr. According to Hackey, the ballistics from the murder were matched with the gun used in the Tupac murder. Bro, how did Tupac get killed by his own boy gun? How did Tupac get caught, killed with Fatal's gun, y'all? Ballistics show that the gun from the House of Blues is the same gun that killed Tupac. And are y'all hearing what the fuck I'm saying here right now? Ballistics show the gun that killed Tupac is the same gun from the House of Blues. I don't think y'all reading this or understand what the hell you seeing. Bro. <sighs> Murders in the immediate aftermath of Tupac Shakur were those affiliated witnesses or with knowledge of the murder. Yacht Fuller was assassinated hit and death row records were the first to call it a suicide. We had the tapes and telephone calls between Frank Alexander and various death row insiders about this murder. Also, we had the FBI report that states that this was an execution murder. Murders before Suge was released from prison were those who were Suge's inner circle to weaken Suge from putting together muscle to retaliate upon his release. 
Now, according to Kevin Hackey, the gun used to kill Pac Sh- to kill Tupac Shakur was a Glock 40 that was confiscated by an off-duty Santa Monica police officer during a routine search at the House of Blues of Fatal Hussein Fatal, one of Tupac's outlaws. The gun was ballistics tested by the FBI before being released to Kevin Hackey, who subsequently gave the gun to Reggie Wright Jr. According to Hackey, the ballistics from the murder were matched with the gun used in Tupac murder. This nigga gave Reggie the gun, high pocket kill with the gun. The timeline on the gun looks like this. July 4th, 1996, at the House of Blues, Hussein Fader is detained for the possession of a firearm when he attempts to enter the venue with the gun. Late July, Reggie Wright contacts Kevin Hackey and asks him to keep tabs on the weapon. The weapon is ballistic tested and run through the crime database. No matches crime is found at that time. Sometime in August, Santa Monica police contact Kevin Hackey and tell him the gun is clear for pickup. He retrieves the gun and takes it to his handlers at the FBI ATF. They claim him to release the gun to Reggie Wright Jr. He gives the gun to Wright. On September 7th, 1996, the gun is used to kill rapper Tupac Shakur. When Las Vegas police book shell cases and bullets into evidence, they are sent off to the FBI where the ballistics, where they are ballistics tested. They are run through the federal database where they match the gun confiscated at the House of Blues. Holy shit. Whoa. Holy shit. Holy shit. Let's see what's here. I'm using this footage right here under fair use, copyright disclaimer under section 107 under copyright act 1976 allowance made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, common news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by the copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips to balance in favor of fair use. Let me put this up here and let's see what they got here. A new documentary is asking an old question Who killed rapper Tupac Shakur? And now, former Compton officer is offering a $100,000 challenge to the man he's convinced was behind the murder. Chris Blashford has the latest developments. This scene has haunted Las Vegas investigators for 11 years. And detectives there are now planning a fresh to Los Angeles, seeking information leading to the gunman who shot up this BMW and killed rap star Tupac Shakur. It wasn't a random shooting. Former Tupac bodyguard Frank Alexander. In this new documentary released in October, recounts two dozen bodyguards that night were told not to carry weapons. He now believes this fight involving Tupac and a rival Crip gang member at the MGM Hotel was staged so the rival could later be blamed for Tupac's murder. A setup, he charges, orchestrated by Death Row Records CEO Marion Suge Knight and Reggie Wright Jr., the record company's security chief. It could not have happened in the way that it did without them having knowledge of it. But Suge says, why would he order Tupac shot knowing he'd be sitting right next to him in the BMW? He says he had nothing to do with Tupac's murder. 
God knows the truth. And when it comes down to it, it's not one person in the world with any sense to know I have anything to do with um, getting Tupac shot. And Reggie Wright gave an interview to AllHipHop.com saying the documentary is filled with outright lies. But Kevin Hack, no another former Tupac bodyguard, is challenging Reggie Wright Jr.'s truthfulness. I'm offering Reggie right now 100K to take a polygraph. That he had not, he had no involvement whatsoever to do with Tupac scaling. Hacky, according to these court filings, worked for two years as an undercover agent for the FBI and ATF helping the feds. To investigate Marion Knight and death row records for racketeering violations. And Hacky. A uh, former Compton School District police officer who worked off-duty hours as a Tupac bodyguard now reveals to Fox 11 News an interesting series of events. He says, here at the House of Blues in 1996, an off-duty Santa Monica cop working security confiscated a 40 caliber Glock handgun similar to this from a member of Tupac Shakur's entourage. About two weeks after that, I was contacted by Reggie to go over to Santa Monica Police Department to pick up this firearm. Hackey says he first showed the handgun to his FBI handlers and then turned it over to Reggie Wright Jr. A month later in Las Vegas, investigators say it was a 40 Glock handgun that killed Tupac Shakur. Hackey believes the murder weapon was the same gun he gave Reggie Wright Jr. I believe it is. And here's why. Hackey says. He asked Wright about the 40 Glock. He stated once I gave him that firearm, he gave it back to his daddy, who at the time was a lieutenant with Compton Police over the uh, gang division. He said his daddy booked that firearm in the property, which, you know, is really and truly far-fetched. And Hackey says six months after Tupac's murder, he had another conversation with Reggie Jr. about the missing handgun. It didn't go well. Reggie told me, you know, hey, it ain't given time. You know, I have the money, I have the people, I can have you killed, it ain't given time. Hackey says he told his FBI handlers, and according to these transcripts obtained by Fox 11, also told LAPD detectives a decade ago that Wright had threatened, I can have you killed at any given time. Reggie Wright Jr. declined an on-camera interview, but in a written statement told us, I had nothing to do with Pac's death. He calls Hackey and former bodyguard Frank Alexander liars. But it's Hacky who was offering the truth challenge. My 100,000 is sitting here. I want Reggie to put up 100,000. I'll gladly, I will gladly take a polygraph, and I will gladly take his money, and I'll go ahead and start a uh, college fund for underprivileged kids in Las Vegas under Tupac's name. In response, Wright tells Hacky, pay for it, set it up, let's do it. The polygraph challenge, he claims, is only a ruse to publicize Alexander's new Tupac documentary. A DVD hack he says he has nothing to do with. The only thing I want here is for Reggie to be arrested. Hackey says a polygraph will determine who is the real liar. Meanwhile, Las Vegas detectives say they plan to meet with Hackey and hear his allegations. And Hackey hopes his statements will be enough to interest a grand jury. Chris watch.
Um, but it was, you know, it was a situation that, that was out of control. Yeah. And every time we, uh, you know, I would bring his lawyers in to, uh, to have an accounting, mm -hmm. you know, there'd be another, another gift, oh, you know, yes. or, or, the, or, the, or, hear about that. or the lawyers would, uh, mm -hmm. the lawyers would fly into town, mm -hmm. you know, would fly his lawyer in Charles Ogletree, mm -hmm. you know, we'd have a meeting set up and the meeting all of a sudden got canceled, you know? Yeah. So it was, you know, it wasn't, it stuff just wasn't right. It wasn't handled professionally. Yeah. And, um, I, uh, I was very happy when Tupac gave me the, the okay to uh, type up David Kenner's, uh, your services are no longer needed letter. <laughs> and we faxed that over to him immediately because it was a conflict of interest for him to represent Pac. And we kept telling him and he finally, you know, accepted that he needed to move on. And we were shopping, right. you know, for lawyers right. at the time. Um, you know, it was a, it was a fascinating time. Mm -hmm. It was a fascinating time. It was. My bad, y'all forgot to take it on mute. Number 20, the Dan and Mora contract was signed by Suge Knight on September 15th and by Tupac Shakur on September 16th, meaning that this contract was written the day before Suge and Kenna visited Tupac Shakur. They intended for this contract to be vague so that they could steal Tupac's money. Evidence of that, evidence of that theft surfaced after Tupac's death. The theft would become a problem for David Kenner as his contract was a clear conflict of interest for Kenner that could have led to his disbarment. David Kenner was terminated by Tupac Shakur days before Tupac murder. David Kenner was fired days before Vegas. Reggie was fired days before Vegas. Suge finds out that they stealing 30, 40 million before Vegas. If you remember Suge, the interview, how he talked about uh, he caught them stealing like 30, 40 million, and, and they was giving David Ken a hundred thousand a month, and he was giving kickbacks to uh Jimmy Iovine allegedly. Should said that. Oh, y'all think y'all heard something? Y'all ain't hear nothing yet. Evidence 22, Tupac made it clear in New York four days before his murder that he was leaving death row records. Y'all heard that? Tupac made it clear in New York four days before his murder, well, four days before he got shot, that he was leaving death row records. That's when they had the argument at in New York at the, after the MTV Awards, when Snoop went on the radio and said he ain't got no beef with, with Big E and Puff. And that's when Michael Moore said that Pac got in an argument with Suge and was like, yo, you can have Machiavelli, all the rights to that. I'm done. That's my third album. I'm going. I'm out. And him and Shug had an argument because of Snoop. And then when Tupac and Michael Moore was going to, to the jet, Pac told Michael Moore that he was a dead man walking. 23, evidence of the theft of Tupac's money emerges month after Tupac's murder as Tupac's mother 
Afini Shakur begins digging into the Tupac's business affairs. 24, Michael Harris was beginning to send thugs to visit Shook, requesting payment of original investments and profits from the record label. Shook and the circle was turning them away. Y'all remember that, right? That's when the whole Lydia Harris thing was going on. Wayman Anderson says that Michael and Lydia Harris were a part of the plot to overthrow Death Row Records at the time that Tupac Shakur was killed. Sharitha would have inherited Suge Knight's shares in Death Row Records. At the time, Death Row Records was worth as much as $500 million. A dead Suge would have made her a rich chick, boy. Lord have mercy. 27, FBI, ATF, and LAPD were all investigating death row records at the time of Tupac murder and the attempt on Suge Knight. Those investigations would probably stop if Suge Knight was killed, leaving Sharitha and Reggie to run the record label without interference. Sharitha Knight was dating officer Kevin Gaines at the time of Tupac's murder. Snoop was on trial for murder that same year. Snoop was acquitted when evidence disappeared from the evidence locker at the LAPD that Gaines had access to and was suspected in theft and suspect and a suspect in the theft of the evidence. Gaines was also in Las Vegas on a special assignment with other officers on the night Tupac and Suge was shot. See the document below. Gaines was gunned down by Officer Frank Lager, who later said the murder was a sanctioned hit by ordered by LAPD brass, specifically police chief Bernard Parks. Oh, shit. Whoa. Lager recanted this statement on the record tape at the police academy he says that douglas asked if it was an accident to which ligo replied no it wasn't an accident oh my god i want i want shit my fucking Allegedly, the chief of police. I'm telling you, L.A. is different, bro. L.A. is different. Sharita Knight was Suge Dog, Snoop Dogg's manager at the time of the murder. Snoop began the narrative that Suge was responsible for Tupac's murder. He damn sure did. Remember? That nigga, they, 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 he did that interview and they asked him who he think they killed, who he, who they, who do Snoop think killed Tupac? And Suge said, I mean, Snoop said, the nigga that was sitting next to him. I'll never forget that. Which is stupid because if I put a hit out on the nigga, I'm not sitting in the car with the nigga. Bullets go through people. Shit, bullets go through trees. And trees is a known a, a safe spot to try to duck behind, but some bullets could go through trees. A person? I'm not sitting there trying to make myself look innocent because this nigga, man, skinny as Tupac was. Fuck out of here. Snoop told sh sheriffs. That Suge Knight was responsible for Tupac's murder to throw investigators off the off of a trail. The incident happened at the Universal Amphitheater on May 14th, 1998. See the report below. Snoop said that his security detail ditched him, and sheriffs say that he was approached by gang members affiliated with Death Row Records, Bloods, that meant to do him harm. They saved him from that harm, and he told them that Suge was responsible for Tupac's murder. Many investigators have cited Suge Knight for being uncooperative, but in the interview, 
for the Biggie and Tupac documentary, Suge is candid about Snoop without mentioning his name. The Death Row Records website broadcasts a message to Snoop, 2001, the year of fear. All dogs running high. Suge is coming home. Watch the documentary on YouTube. A minute and a half, seven seconds, seven minutes. A minute, 30 seconds to 2001. The year all dogs fear running high. Sugar's coming home. Detective Armwine, who worked undercover for Long Beach police while assigned to an FBI task force, he said, Suge Knight used to slap dog around like he was a little. Oh, like he was a little girl. <laughs> Tupac, if he was going to go to Las Vegas. Wait, he rode on the back of the plane and constantly asked Tupac if he was going to Las Vegas. Snoop said, we start a coalition and we get rid of Suge Knight, number one, snap his fingers for good because that's a bump in the road and we ain't got a negative bump in the road. It makes it hard. Wow. Frank Alexander, secret recordings of his telephone calls with death row insiders and reporter Chuck Phillips give insight into the inner working of death row records and their ties to Phillips and creating false stories that are planned in the, planted in the LA Times. Chuck Phillips is dismissed when he is caught fabricating the story about the murder of Tupac Shakur, thus solidifying the plan of stories to throw investigators and public opinion off of the trail of the real killers of Tupac Shakur and Biggie Smalls. Reggie Wright Jr. has ties through his father to the Compton police who attempted to steer the investigation toward a conclusion that Orlando Anderson was the shooter in the murder of Tupac Shakur. Orlando Anderson has a airtight alibi as Las Vegas has cameras everywhere. Corey Evans Edwards tells of seeing Orlando Anderson at the bar about the time of the shooting. See information below. Las Vegas police are handed Orlando Anderson by Compton police during the raid. They are expected by Compton police to arrest him as he is being handed up on the silver platter as the shooter. Las Vegas police are not even interested in him because they already know about his airtight alibi. Compton police established this pattern when they also steered the investigation in the L. Ray Theater murder of Kelly Jameson and stopped LAPD investigators from issuing indictments. Confession letter to the murder of Tupac and attempt murder, Suge Knight, is written in 1998 and dictated by Malcolm Patton, one of the shooters and given to Fox 11 journalist, Chris Blatchford. Chris Blatchford also talks to M Malcolm Patton about the murder and provides a written statement on his conversations. The letter in Blatchford's statement details the conspiracy to commit murder began in Balboa Park, clearly given Los Angeles jurisdiction over this case. Ooh, this is where it gets good. On June 24, 2014, Russell Poole and R.J. Bond met with four representatives from the LAPD and provided them with a copy of the confession letter. They placed special markings on the letter and received assurance that the information will be investigated. Instead, it's leaked. Six days later, after the letter appears on the internet, Suge Knight is shot in the West Hollywood nightclub by assailants that yell, you killed Tupac as the fire shot. 
35. The attempt to derail the confession letter is traced back to Reggie Wright Jr., Darian Dupree, one of the cops that Russell and RJ gave the confession letter to. The attempt to derail the confession letter is traced back to Reggie Wright Jr., Darian Dupree, was Greg Caden's partner, who is a close friend and apologist of Reggie Wright Jr. Greg Caden is a close friend. I don't know what apologist means. I'm about to look that up. Of Reggie Wright Jr. <laughs> you can't make this shit up, boy. Apologist, a person who offers an argument in defense of something controversial. A defender, a supporter, an upholder, an advocate. Was Greg Caden's partner, who is a close friend and apologist of Reggie Wright Jr. So Greg Caden as a defender, a supporter, an upholder, an advocate for Reggie Wright Jr. Implicated in the letter as responsible for the murder of Tupac Shakur, an attempt on Suge Knight on September 7, 1996. Greg Caden was the first person to talk about the letter on the internet after it was given to LAPD. The confession letter given to LAPD has special markings that appeared on the internet with those markings. The LAPD leak is clearly documented and is the subject of an internal affair investigation, CF number 14001995. Y'all can look that up. Keep in mind that Darren Dupree illegally access LAPD computers and cloned cell phones and was reprimanded by LAPD and Gray Caden was responsible for overturning the George Torres Ramos case by what the judge said was reckless disregard for the truth. Which is reckless disregard for the truth is the same shit we're writing that fake confession letter saying that Poochie confessed. Boom. 36. Confession letter points to Reggie Wright Jr.'s coat there. I forgot I forgot what the fuck that shit was. Coop that, right? Kudita, a sudden, violent, and unlawful seizure of power from the government. Kudita. That shit got to be French. Kudita at death row. Reggie Wright, Reggie, confession letter points to Reggie Wright Jr.'s Kudita at death row records and heist of Tupac Shakur music. Confession letter points to Sharitha Knight, complicit in the plot. 38, David Kenner is also implicated by the confession letter. Robert Sorier says Kenner was at the meeting with the gangs. Oh, shit. Chill. What? The book Murder Rap is released that pins the murders of Tupac Shakur and Christopher Wallace on the dead guys. The book is written by Greg Caden, who is close to Reggie Wright Jr., a suspect in the Biggie Smalls killing, and is now a suspect in the Tupac Shakur killing. Greg Caden admits in the book that he had no access to the Christopher Wallace 
civil trial documents, which excludes the most significant portion of the case. The book follows the same storyline as the previous planned stories by the LA Times journalist Chuck Phillips. Greg Caden is also the former lead detective on the Christopher Wallace homicide and previous partner of Darren Dupree. Dupree is the cop that leaked the confession letter to Caden. Caden had an additional motive to derail the confession letter. His book and movie deal that would prove worthless if the case is solved is very, very similar to Chuck Phillips' secret tape recording made by Frank Alexander, where instead of asking questions, they attempt to sell a conclusion. <laughs> wow. Mario Hammonds. Kevin Hackey, Psycho Mike, Kenny Boangi are all discredited without the specific evidence, even though many of their testimonies considered credible in other investigations, including Clarence LAPD offices and border rights hearings for wrongdoing. They all provided specific evidence of LAPD involvement and the murder of Christopher Wallace, organized by Reggie Wright. Oh, shit. Woo, baby. Wow. So Reggie's a suspect in Biggie's murder, y'all. I bet you Greg Caden gave that nigga immunity. His boy. They all provide specific evidence of LAPD police involvement in the murder of Christopher Wallace, organized by Reggie Wright Jr., Number 41, first civil trial in the state. First civil trial in the state of Christopher Wallace is declared a mistrial when evidence is suppressed by the city of Los Angeles and LAPD, specifically in the wrongful death of Wallace. Evidence pointed to the involvement of off duty police and Reggie Wright Jr. in the murder of Christopher Wallace. Holy crap. Second civil trial in the state of Christopher Wallace is dismissed with promise by city of L city of Los Angeles and LAPD that they would redouble the investigation. They tell lead investigator to shut down the case 24 hours after the settlement. Ain't that a bitch? Confession letter indicates that Reggie Wright Jr. selected Little Half Dead to murder Tupac Shakur because of previous interactions between Little Half Dead and Tupac, where Tupac stole a song from him. Look at the album cover for Little Half Dead Dead Series, where you will see a slumped over dead Tupac at Can Am Studios. See photos below. Sampling and theft appear to have been a common practice in the early roots of rap music. Watch three minutes and
He took that shit down. Bay rapper claims Tupac stole his concept for a song. Let me see some. A rapper says Tupac stole his concept for a song. Yeah, whoever put that up, that shit is gone. All right, 44. Since the first draft of the book, two witnesses have come forward. One of them states that she saw and talked to Rafael Perez on the night before the murder of Christopher Wallace and the night of the murder. She was afraid to come forward earlier because she was in fear of her life. We have also had a rapper tweet us that he knows that Snoop had prior knowledge of the murder of Tupac Shakur before that murder happened. Interesting. According to the confession letter, the conspiracy began in Los Angeles. One incident, one incident was documented as a gang summit in Balboa Park where Reggie Wright Jr. asked the gangs for permission to kill both Tupac Shakur and Suge Knight. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What? According to the confession letter, the conspiracy began in Los Angeles. One incident was documented as gang summit in Balboa Park, where Reggie Wright Jr. asked the gangs for permission to kill both Tupac and Shook. Chris Blashford tells us that, according to his informant, those behind the plot included David Kenner, Reggie Wright Jr., and Sharita Knight. At the summit, it was decided that Donald Smith, a.k.a. Little Half Dead, Malcolm Patton, and Danny Patton, a.k.a. White Boy, would be the shooters. The motive? Death of Tupac's money and music, as well as the control of Death Row Records, was the major motive. Both Tupac Shakur and Suge Knight were in the crosshairs that night. Keep in mind that Death Row Records was worth over $500 million at the time, and Tupac had unreleased but completed songs in the vault that were worth an additional couple of hundred million dollars. Donald Smith, a.k.a. Little Have That, had the additional motive of the theft of his music by Tupac Shakur and had recently had his contract sold to Priority Records by Suge Knight. Danny Patton was paid 100000 for the murder. Suspects. Donald Smith, a.k.a. Little Half Dead, was the alleged trigger man on September 7th, 1996, responsible for killing Tupac Shakur. Smith is the cousin of Calvin Brodus, a.k.a. Snoop Dogg. Smith was represented by Suge Knight and Death Row Records, and his contract was sold off to, to Priority Records. He had given a demo tape to Tupac, and two of his songs were stolen by Tupac, according to the confession letter. Death in the hip-hop world was a common practice at that time. Smith is affiliated with the Long Beach Crips. Snoop Dogg, Donald Smith's cousin, tells Sheriff deputies, on May 14th, 1998, that Suge Knight was behind the murder of rapper Tupac Shakur. Was this to throw the law enforcement off the trail of his cousin? When you look at the cover of Dead Serious by Little Half Dead, there's a picture of a murdered Tupac on Can -Am, at Can-Am Studios. From this interview, 
you can see that Half Dead is Snoop Dogg's enforcer. Especially, check out the closing paragraph. I ain't reading all this shit. Let's see the closing paragraph. Let me see. I'm going to start from here. All that bullshit y'all put out, we accepted it. We played it for y'all we gave y'all niggas a shot if you don't give us the opportunity to play to her then you just taking our shit and stealing it but niggas from the west don't know that because it's a dream for a nigga to go on the east coast the average nigga from los angeles can't just go to new york and hold his own as a rapper but now you see things but now you see these young niggas like game and the young homies that's rapping, coming out, ripping them niggas up. And what happens? The East snatches them up and says, come over here. Because the West Coast niggas ain't strong enough to put him in the game. Dre had him, but Dre didn't do nothing with him. How do we change that? We start a coalition. And we get, a, and we get rid of Suge Knight, number one. Snaps his fingers. And we get right, we get rid of Suge, Suge Knight for good because that's a bump in the road. And when you got a negative bump in the road, it makes it hard. When he gets released from prison, niggas scared to go places and niggas get timid. Instead of us being on a peaceful musical moment, if Death Row was dope, nigga, you wouldn't have to be on that negative shit. Make good music and that keeps you alive not hating on niggas, destroying a motherfucker's reputation and trying to bring a nigga down. Try to bring a nigga up because the nigga you bringing down is like, damn, why this nigga trying to bring me down? And he tied me into people you don't even know. And while you hating on him, you don't realize that everybody that loves him hates you. But the way I look at it a long time ago, my fans are my fans. Say fuck Snoop around one of my fans. See what they do to you. Yeah, Snoop fans are like Laker fans. They carry knives. Snoop. It doesn't matter. Laker fans, Raider fans, whoever your nigga is, you ride with them to the fullest. If a nigga disrespect your peoples, you feel disrespected, you feel disrespected. There's my homie half dead right here. A nigga can't say nothing foul about Snoop Dogg in front of him. In jail, on the streets, no matter where he at, I don't give a fuck. If we ain't cool, a nigga can't say nothing. Okay. It's Tupac at Can-Am Studios. That's the studio. You see how I look? And then look at Lil' Half Dead album cover. And you look to your left right here. You see Tupac dead. And uh, Gaddafi, right? See the braids in the ball head. Why would he do that? He must have really hated that nigga Pac.
And then, what does this mean coming from Snoop, y'all? Yeah? Little I have that with a, a, a gun and uh and some money. It's Russell Poole is on they ass, boy. Check out Snoop Dogg addresses Little Have that with a gun and money. Must be a code for something, huh? Malcolm Patton was the shooter that was supposed to take out Suge Knight. He shot twice, missed his target. He spoke to Chris Blashford over the telephone and offered to provide him with details about guns, shooters, clothes, cars, and routes. Danny Patton, a.k.a. White Boy, was allegedly paid $100,000 for the hit in the form of a cashier's check. Danny's gun jammed. Danny Patton is a leader, is a looter's park pyro blood. Reggie Wright Jr. allegedly attended the gang summit and paid the 100,000 bounty to Danny Patton. Reggie was responsible for disarming all the Tupac's bodyguard that night. He also attended every single meeting between witnesses and the Las Vegas police. Reggie Wright Jr. worked previously for the Compton Jail and then for the Compton police. His father, Reggie Wright Sr., was in charge of the gang unit inside the Compton police and was absur absorbed by the sheriff's department when it was learned that corruption existed within the Compton PD. LAPD's detective Fred Miller stated that Reggie Wright Jr. was known to control the drug trade in Compton. Well, we know this nigga moved drugs. He done got, he just came home from that shit. So we know he moved drugs because he just came home from that shit. Oh, my Lord. Detective Frank Miller stated that Reggie Wright Jr. was known to control the drug trade in Compton. Reggie was also known to rob drug dealers of their drugs and money instead of busting them. Oh, Reggie, I knew you was a, you ain't no cop, J. Reed. You ain't no cop, J. Reed. He left the cop, the police. He left the cop, the police on the workers' comp claim. That's when he had those swollen feet I was telling y'all about. Kevin Hackey claims he handed the weapon used in the Tupac killing to Reggie Wright two weeks before the killing. Hackey claims that the weapon had been ballistic tested month before the killing and that the ballistic tests matched the ballistics of the Tupac Shakur murder. Reggie was at Club 662 at the time of the shooting. Michael Moore, a Tupac bodyguard, was next to Reggie when the shooting happened and her got him come over Reggie Wright's radio. He then heard someone he describes as white say, don't say nothing over the radio. Got him. Probably referred to Suge Knight, Suge Knight and Tupac Shakur at the time of the shooting because with 13 bullets launched, they really thought they got them. They really thought, got them. They really thought they got them. We have a tape of one of the security guards that worked for Reggie Wright Jr. stating that he had turned to the dark side and had been, and had, wait, stating that he had turned to the dark side and had the red carpet installed in his office indicating that he had accepted membership into the Bloods game. The confession letter places Reggie Wright Jr. 
at the gang summit asking directly for permission to kill both Tupac, Shakur, and Suge Knight. The confession letter was given to the LAPD. Instead of being investigated, it was leaked by a cop with direct ties back to Reggie Wright Jr. Sharitha Knight was estranged from Suge Knight and was dating the LAPD officer Kevin Gaines at the time of Tupac's death. Kevin Gaines was killed by Officer Frank Lager on March 18, 1997. Sharitha was the manager of Snoop Dogg. Snoop Gaines, no, Snoop Dogg's trial for murder centered around evidence that disappeared from the LAPD's evidence locker at the precinct that Kevin Gaines had access to. Sharitha would have inherited the shares of death row records if Suge Knight had been killed on September 7th, 1996. One of our rappers, one of our rapper followers reached out a month ago via Twitter and said that Snoop was warned by Sharitha not to come to Las Vegas that night. Snoop also asked Tupac over and over and over on September 4th, 1996, if he was attending the events in Las Vegas. Chris Blashford says the shooter said Sharitha was behind the murder of Tupac Shakur in an attempt on Suge Knight's life on September 7th, 1996. While being managed by Sharitha Knight, Snoop tells sheriff's deputies on May 1st, 1998, that Suge Knight was behind the murder of Tupac Shakur. David Kenner was the attorney of was the attorney of record for Death Row Records. Suge Knight's attorney, Tupac's attorney, until he was fired August 27th, 1996 which is a little less than two weeks before he got shot. Just days prior to Tupac being shot, Kenner was also Snoop Dogg's attorney who pulled a miracle defense when the evidence disappeared from LAPD's evidence locker. If Kenner was involved in the murder of Tupac and attempted murder of Suge Knight on September 7, 1996, he would have been representing Suge Knight currently with a severe conflict of interest. It could be that he is now reunited with Suge Knight to protect his own interests by staring an investigation into the murder of Tupac and attempted murder on Suge Knight. Kenner was the person that rented the home from Frank Longo that was owned by Larry Longo from the DA's office. Kenner moved Suge into the house and caused a dime to be dropped on Suge. That conflict was that conflict of interest was reported in Los Angeles Times, causing embarrassment to the DA's office. David Kenner's representation of Tupac Shakur was a direct conflict of interest to his representation of Suge Knight and Death Row Records. Kenner have faced disbarment for this conflict if interest if Tupac Shakur had lived. This Tupac letter. To whom it may concern, I, Tupac Shakur, give David Kenner permission to receive copies of my contracts and royalty statements. And also he has permission to negotiate on my behalf. However, he may not close or finalize any deal without my approval. That is just a letter to authorize Mr. Kenner to negotiate on my behalf. This is just a letter to authorize Mr. Kenner to negotiate on my behalf. Thank you, Tupac Shakur, July 30th, 1995. Witness Desiree Smith. Tupac authorized David Kenner to review contracts and royalty statements. Reggie Wright's deposition. Give names of off-duty LA police cops working for death row.
right. It ain't a full page. Death Row Records was le a legitimate company which employed some individuals who were involved in street gang crime. At the conclusion of his interview, Reginald Wright, owner of Rightway Protective Serv Services, reluctantly provided investigators with the names of three additional department employees who possibly perform private security for Rightway Protective Services, death row records. The concerned employees were police officer Hurley Glenn Kreiner, serial number, whatever, police officer David Love, serial number, whatever, and Hollywood Patrol Division, uh, possibly Kenneth Sutton, not verified. Wright was vague in explaining their actual roles with Right Way Protective Services. This information will be addressed in a separate investigation. A fact sheet has been submitted and internal fear number has yet to be assigned. So these are the Right Way Securities KM studio schedule. Off duty cops worked at Death Row Records right through Right Way Security. Can't really see these names like that. I see Michael Moore right here on Saturday. Williams, Moore, Williams. Johnson. I see Michael name more name on there. I don't recognize any of that one. Right for you, consider the Can Am studio schedule. Off duty cops work for Death Row. Okay. Gecko ammunition used in Biggie's killing. Used to kill Biggie. ATF agent Blank, an ammunition expert, stated that the bullet that killed Biggie is called Gecko ammunition and manufactured in Germany. The only two distributors of this ammunition in the entire U.S. is in Corona, California, telephone number blank blank, and in Cluster, New Jersey, telephone number blank blank. It is unclear whether the 9 millimeter Gecko ammunition has ever been compared to some of the 9 millimeter ammunition found blank. That is believed to also be gecko ammunition it is alleged that by several cis that blank blank were directly involved in the biggie murder and that other police officers were aware and or present as well who was convicted of possession with the intent to distribute cocaine in las vegas was a known death row groupie it was also widely known amongst lapd blank Office, Officer Blank were two of Chief Park's personal recruits into LAPD. One CI started linking LAPD officers with the Biggie killing. He was told to stop and not bring LAPD officers into the investigation. Oh, shit. Gaines' personal file disappears during the investigation of Gaines' Liger incident. Los Angeles Police Department, LAPD, Detective Major Narcotics Division, LAPD Sergeant Blank was present during the, the interview. After being advised of the identity of the interviewing agent, in the nature of the interview, he provided the following information. 
blank after blank shooting incident involving LAPD officers Kevin Gaines is when he revealed that what's that say seek to be covered up on a lot of situations that blank were aware of blank previously went over a few of these situations regarding games shooting blank went through three separate border rights hearings which is unprecedented he added nobody through more than one and feels blank blank look like a mark Furman type racist since Gaines was black even after completely cleared of any wrongdoing blank agreed to 250,000 settlement which was the result of the 25 million dollar lawsuit attorney Johnny Crockin filed blank because anything over 100,000 needs to be more than one signature blank agreed to pay 100,000 No, uh, uh, blank. Wait. Oh, uh, agreed to pay John to pay Cochran with three checks of ninety thousand, ninety thousand and seventy thousand. After realizing this would look odd, being so close to the hundred thousand threshold, Cochran then requested twelve separate checks totaling two hundred and fifty thousand, which he received. Blank the day after Gaines shooting. Blank ordered blank personal file to be audited, which was done by LAPD. Officer blank concluded his audit on April 8th, 1997. Blank maintained blank personal file until June or July, 1997. There's too much blanks and shit in this motherfucker. I, ain't, I don't know what the hell going on. In September 1996, Gaines was assigned to a desk at his workplace two days prior to the Tupac Shakur shooting until two weeks later. Gaines allegedly was on a special assignment yet seen in Las Vegas hanging out. Blank captain, blank, 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 alleged, allowed Gaines to be on a special assignment. Added that the deputy chief, blank, blank, in the city of LAPD believes they all are corrupt because what they allow to go on regarding games. And I don't know about all that. What's, what's this here? Federal Bureau of Investigation. Blank Detective, Orange, New Jersey Police Department. Telephone number blank was interviewed telephonically at his workplace. After being advised of the identity of the interviewer agent and the nature of the interview, he provided the following information. Blank stated back in late 1996 or early 1997, a 16 and 17 year old subject were arrested in the shooting death of Yafu Fula, AKA Gaddafi. The murder of Fula occurred in East Orange. New Jersey, but the subjects were arrested in Orange, New Jersey. This murder took place just after the shooting death 
of rapper Tupac Shakur was killed in September 1996 in Las Vegas, Nevada. While sitting in the car, Blank, Detective Blank stated, Fuller was the key witness who, event, who evidently witnessed the Tupac shooting. Detective Blank added Fuller was killed mob style as he was executed from point blank range by the teenagers who apparently have an uncle or some other relative who lived in Los Angeles and was somehow involved with death row records. So you telling me the niggas that in Jersey that killed goddamn motherfucking Gaddafi who had an uncle or someone of a relative who lived in Los Angeles and sound how I was involved with death row records. Very fucking industry. Interesting. Detective Blank, who stated he will pull this entire file from their archives and attempt to locate the two teenagers, recalls he murdered, he recalls the murder of Fuller was done professionally and wiped out the key witness in solving the Tupac murder. What's this? Other LAPD, other LAPD officers in LA during other LAPD officers in Las Vegas during murder of Tupac Shador. LAPD officers blank were present in Las Vegas for the Tyson Holyfield fight. More than one. Tupac and Death Row was shot Tupac of Death Row was shot and killed in Las Vegas in a car driven blank as they left the MGM Grand. This occurred approximately two hours after the beating blank by blank. Tupac and others, Tupac died six days later from the gunshots. September 9, 1996, according to Compton PD, Search warrant gang members of a gang associated with death row met at Luda's Park in Los Angeles to discuss the retaliation against Southside Crip members for the Tupac meet shooting. After this meeting, LAPD learned that Blank and Englewood school police officers was working for death row. October 22nd, Blank was incarcerated in LA County Jail for probation violation. The B in blank at the MGM Grand. That got to be Suge Knight. Suge Knight was in, incarcerated in LA County jail for a probation violation. The B in of Orlando Anderson at the MGM Grand with Tupac. That's easy to figure out. While LAPD is interviewing death row employees, the interview was disrupted by a San Bernardino reserve officer working security for death row. November 4th, 1996, FBI, Los Angeles receives a call from LAPD officer identifying himself as Officer Blank inquiring whether the FBI had an ongoing investigation on death row. Blank was investigated for ties to death row in November. Who the fuck is these people? Is that Reggie? March 9th, 1997, Biggie is shot and killed as he leaves the Peterson Automotive Museum party in Los Angeles. A dark Chevy SS Impala pulls up next to Biggie's car and shoots several times in the passenger area where Biggie is sitting. Ballistics examination of the shell cases revealed the weapon was used was a nine millimeter and 
the brand ammunition was made by Gecko. And quickly restored order. Response units from the West Hollywood station arrived also and stood by while the concert crowd exited. There were no further incidents directly related to the incident, I mean, related to the concert, and no one was injured. Mr. Brodus was extremely cooperative during the incident and, in fact, said that he was thankful that the, de that the deputies had been there as a as he felt that the assault was intended as an act of intimidation. He told me that he felt that he was in grave danger as a result of leaving death row records and signing with a new, with his new label, No Limit. Mr. Brodus also said that he felt Mr. Honor was in danger as he's still under contract to death row records. During the discussion, I said that I know who killed Tupac. Mr. Brodus responded by saying that it was the man sitting next to him. I asked if he said meant Suge Knight. He replied affirmatively. Mr. Brodus also said that he was upset that his bodyguard disappeared and did not assist him. Snoop tells Los Angeles Sheriff's Department officers that Suge Knight was responsible for Tupac's murder. Snoop was the original source of the Suge Knight killed Tupac narrative. Oh, shit. I guess they ain't gonna call Snoop a snitch, right? The County of Los Angeles Sheriff's Department from Brad Welker Lieutenant Universal Station to LAPD robbery homicide. Subject, Calvin Brodus interview. Suspect, Brodus Calvin, AKA Snoop Doggy Dog, Honor Delma, AKA Dazzy Dillinger. Location, Universal Amphitheater, Universal City, May 1st, 1998. Why is this relevant? Gangsta rap artists Calvin Brodus and Delmar Honor were arrested by deputies Ron, whatever, Ron and Jim Farrell for possession of less than one ounce of marijuana during the incident at the Universal Amphitheater. Deputies, so, I can't, that shit is so fucking blurry. Is it Sabatine and Pharrell were looking, were working under a private entity contract providing uniform deputies outside of, outside the backstage area of the amphitheater. They were assigned to monitor and assist with the universal protectors used to screen anyone entering through the artist's interest. The incident began when four to five male African-Americans approached Mr. Brodus. He recognized them as employees of Death Row Records, a company he just broke away from. One of them struck him in the face with his fist. Mr. Brodus, Mr. Honor, and the third man, Priest Brooks, immediately ran out of the backstage area outside to where they knew the deputies were posted. As the three men approached the two deputies, Mr. Honor yelled out, he's got a gun. <laughs> That's Daz. <laughs> he's got a gun, deputies. Sabatina and Pharrell immediately patted all three men for weapons and discovered that both Brodus and Honor had a baggie of marijuana in their pockets. Deputy Sabatine requested a census when he noticed when he noted that approximately 60 males 
60? Males had exited the backstage area and were approaching them in varying degrees of hostility. Approximately 20 deputies assigned to booth, to booth the Universal substation and the, is that Unisat? Reserve Company responded along with 12 Universal Studio armed security officers, off-duty police officers, and 30 uniform American Protective Services officers responded. Snoop saved by the Los Angeles Sheriff Department as he approached by five employees of Death Row Records. Now, what is this? Corey Edmonds' statement about seeing Orlando Sin and Orlando Anderson at the bar. Statement of Corey Lamont Edwards. I live at my parents' house on 1517 South Mayo Street in Compton. I lived there just about all my life. My parents are Charles and Louise Edwards. My girlfriend is Lisa Garner. Her birthday is April 28, 1975. I have a baby daughter with her. My one-year-old daughter's name is Taylor. Lisa lives family, Lisa's family lives at, uh, I ain't gonna read all these people information, even though you can see it. Uh, her dad is Robert Garner, her, his phone number is blah, blah, blah. I also have a five year old son. His name is Corian, but Lisa's not the mother. I'm not really working right now. I do something management. I do some managing for this boxer named Layman Bruxter. I'm part of his team. I also do some stuff for my buddy Hugs. He's a rapper. I only been arrested once, and that's that was for fighting at the Sharks Club. That was only a misdemeanor thing. I don't consider myself a gang member, but I hang around all the neighborhood Southside Crips. Since we all grew up together, I consider them my friends. I don't associate with the younger guys, just the guys about my age. I know Keefe D, Keith Dwayne Davis, Baby Lane, Orlando Anderson, Wen, Winfrey Prince, and all the guys. I know everyone from the neighborhood. I remember when Tupac got killed. I had driven to Las Vegas with my friends, Red, Ken Johnson, late 20s, early 30s, Polo, Pook. Polo and Pook are cousins and are from Detroit. Red is from Ohio. Pooh got us rooms at the MGM Grand. I can't remember what room numbers. I had tickets to the Tyson fight. I got to go through our friend Gucci from Pasadena. He had an extra ticket. I told him I would pay for it, but he said that I didn't have to, to just buy him a drink. My girlfriend came up to Vegas later with some of her friends. I know that from, I know that there were some other Southside guys there too, but I never saw them. After the Tyson fight, I went to a bar in a hotel and drank with Gucci and Stacy or Gauchi and Stacy, a retired professional basketball player. That's when I saw some of the other friends of mine. I asked them what was going on, and they said that Baby Lane and Tupac had gotten into a fight. I looked around and saw Baby Lane standing in the corner. Me and Gauchi walked up to him and asked him what happened and if he was okay. He said he got into He said he got into it. Where's the rest of it? Declaration of Yay Mike Christie. And this one is real hard to read. I, Yami, Christelle, hereby declare and state that I am a detective 
with the Los Angeles Police Department. I am over 18 years of age and I am competent to testify and if called upon to do so, could and would completely testify to the following facts based upon my personal knowledge. I have spent 17 and a half years in the Los Angeles Police Department. Wait, let me see what I'm reading. Evidence of LAPD cover-up in the Biggie Smalls murder. Is this why they leaked the confession letter? It is time for Tupac and Biggie fans to be, begin asking questions. Okay. This must be important. I have spent 17 and a half years in the Los Angeles Police Department. I was a sergeant until I complained about inappropriate conduct of Chief Burko, including my computer being taken after I input delivery information relax, release to the lawsuit of Wallace versus the city of Los Angeles. The information was input following the mistrial. On August 4th, 2005, police administrator Gerald something sent a notice to all LAPD officers to provide all materials pertaining to the Christopher Wallace homicide investigation. After this, after this what? After this memorandum was issued, I believe that is, more than one week, more than one foot worth of discovery information was received. I think that's what I say. I sat next to Le Lieutenant Bill Scott and input a summary of the information into a discovery matrix on my computer. Upon information and belief, this material had not been turned over to the plaintiffs. Since there was no need after the mistrial to gather information already provided. The material I was asked to summarize included information about the alleged involvement by LAPD officers, a Compton gang member, and other into the murder of Mr. Wallace. The information matrix I prepared included information from the computer runs where people were doing the murder and different witnesses with information concerning the murder of Wallace. This shit is so hard to read. After compli complying this summary of information on the Wallace case, my computer was taken my computer was taken from me. I complained to the Inspector General of Misconduct. The subject matter of my complaint included my suspicion that information regarding Wallace murder was purged from my computer. Oh, shit. The materials in my computer discovery matrix included claims of some of the witnesses. Yo, these motherfuckers is dirty, bro. The LAPD police officers and others were involved in the killing of Mr. Wallace. I was informed on April 21st, 2006 from an officer in risk management that the investigation and recovery of documents pertaining to the Wallace homicide is still going ongoing by LAPD. I believe that many complained about the removal of my computer and potential destruction of my evidence pertaining to the Wallace murder investigation was the reason why I was retaliated against by the LAPD, transferred and unjustly demoted from a converted assignment with internal affairs. I declare 
the foregoing to be true and correct under the penalty of perjury. So these motherfuckers took this dude's whole computer with his evidence and just burnt it, scrubbed it. Now this here is what? What links did the LAPD in Los Angeles, the city of Los Angeles, and the LAPD go into order to keep from paying billions of dollars to the estate of Christopher Wallace? It is time for Tupac and Biggie fans to begin asking questions. The police commissioner meets every week. You could tweet Charlie Beck at LAPD Chief Beck. If you decide you want to be one of the people that tweet, there you go. Let's start. The court. And what did you talk about when they came to see you? The witness, Suge Knight? Court. I'm ordering you to answer my questions, Mrs. Kennedy. Suge Knight. I said Suge Knight. Oh, Suge Knight. Yes, sir. Okay. The Los Angeles Times. You were about to mention the Los Angeles Times. What about the Times? I received volumes of documents. From who? John Phillips? Well, what does this have to do I don't understand what the connection with the Los Angeles, the Los Angeles Times provided you with documents. The city gave me documents and he provided, he gave me the documents, then gave him the documents to bring to the prison. The city gave the LA Times documents and the LA Times provided them to you? Somebody at the LA Times? Yes, sir. What did the documents pertain, pertain to? The documents were of the deposition of Mario Hammonds. Oh, the documents were the deposition of Mario Hammonds. I'm sorry, the deposition of who? Mario Hammonds. They were the transcripts of the deposition. Yes, sir. And is that involving the Christopher Wallace lawsuit? Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead. They were the documents of someone named Yami Christie. Well, was that part of the deposition? It was another deposition of, of Yami Christie. Yami Christie, yes. So you were given the transcripts The whole case of Christopher Wallace, okay, of Mario Hammonds and the witness, Kenneth Boagney. Yami Christie, basically, they gave you the, all the deposition transcripts they had. Yes, sir. Why did the Times give them to you? They were trying to disqualify Perry. Perry Sanders. Who was that? A lawyer? Yes, sir. Okay. They were trying to disqualify Perry Sanders from the Christopher Wallace case. Did that lawyer ever represent you? Perry Sanders? Because, yeah. No. They represented Christopher Wallace family. Okay. And, okay, Mr. Bernstein, I've gotten a little off track here. I'm trying to chase this down as best as I can and try to understand it. I'll see if I can make it more clearer for us all. This deposition that you gave in to Christopher Wallace's case, you were in prison at the time. Yes, sir. Up in Vac Vacaville? Uh, yes, sir. Do you recall when the... No. I was at... 
What is this? Call Quran. Call Quran when I did the deposition. I'm sorry. Call Quran. Yes. Yes, sir. Los Angeles Police Department conducted a physical search of particular police facilities as a result which previously previously undisclosed evidence was discovered. Much of it was in the desk or cabinet of Detective Stephen Katz, the lead detective in the Wallace murder investigation. The documents centered around interviews by several numerous police officers of an incarcerated informant who had been Rafael Perez's cellmate for some extended period of time. He reported that Rafael Perez told him about his and Max's involvement with death row records and their activities at the Peterson Autom Automotive Museum the night of Biggie Small's murder. Monday morning, the scores, Monday morning, scores of documents were turned over to plaintiffs, counsel, and the court. The court gave counsel additional time to review the material and authorized the taking of certain depositions in light of newly discovered information. Over the next few days, more and more documents were turned over for the first time, or their existence was disclosed when plaintiffs counsel when plaintiffs counsel examined the new material. On Tuesday, July 5th, 2005, the day the trial was scheduled to resume, plaintiffs moved the court for an entry of default against the defendants or an alternative or alternative, a mistrial, and an award of attorney fees. The court does not believe that extreme sanction of striking defendants' answers, answer and in entering their defaults is warranted in this case. The court does not find, however, that no sanction other than a mistrial will alleviate the prejudice to plaintiffs caused by defendants' conduct. Okay. Highlights from Wallace versus Los Angeles documents. 528-2004. Hi, Russ. I wanted to send you a copy of the highlights from the roughly 600 pages of various other documents I got from the court. I prepared this summary for LA, Alice said, I don't know her name, Palmer at HBO. Let me know what you think of it or hope. You have a great Memorial Day. Summary of new information in the Wallace versus Los Angeles documents. According to David Mack, on February 10th, 2004, FBI Special Agent Phil Carson from the Bureau's Las Vegas, Bureau's Los Angeles office interviewed him in prison and offered him a deal if he would implicate others in the conspiracy to kill Biggie Smalls. Carson said specifically he was investigating the involvement of police officers in the murder of su uh, sub subsequent cover up. Uh, Carson, wait, I need to blow this up. Carson flatly stated that he believed Mac arranged the murder with other police officers and cited as evidence verbatim the claims in the Wallace civil complaint. Apparently, Carson told Mac, Sammy Martin, 
had already been given some type of immunity deal in exchange for testimony. When Mac, what is that? Infamous. When Mac refused to cooperate, I can't, this shit is so fucking blurry. When Mac emphatically refused to cooperate, Carson said Mac would be charged in the mur in the Wallace murder. Carson lastly asked Mac why Amir Muhammad changed his name from Harry Billups. When Mac provided what Carson deemed to be an invasive answer, he terminated the interview. This is Mac's account of the interview and his handwritten defendant's David Mack's response to the first interrogators and exhibits made forth to them. Special Agent Phil Carson is also the person who confirmed to Ms. Wallace attorneys that a confidential informant reported Amir Muhammad's confession in the Biggie Smalls murder. Muhammad apparently made the confession shortly after the murder. Plaintiff's opposition to the defendant's opposition to extension, the response to summary judgment. The amendment complaint by Mrs. Wallace attorneys states that they have evidence that both David Mack and Kevin Gaines were president in Las Vegas when Tupac was killed. Damn, both of them niggas was in Vegas too? Holy shit. So they wasn't only allegedly at big shit. These niggas both was in Vegas? Wow. That on March 15, 1997, Terrain Ferguson, the death row employee, called the LAPD and reported overwhelming, overhearing Suge Knight brag about killing Biggie Smalls. How could that be if Suge was in jail? When did she go to jail? Biggie got killed with March 9th. I don't know if I believe that. All right. That during the investigation, the LAPD received a clue that police officer Mack was paid $25,000 to murder Biggie Smalls. That Mack was a member of the Fruit of Islam. The witnesses in November 6th Bank of America robbery heard police radios during the getaway. That during the days preceding his murder, Biggie Smalls and his entourage were under surveillance by the LAPD. This claim was also apparently cooperated by a witness on the defendant's Rule 26A initial disclosures list of June 5th, 2003. Detective Stephen Katz, the current lead investigator in the Biggie Smalls case, admitted under oath in his declaration of April 29, 2004, that LAPD investigators now believe the white SUV, which made the U-turn and, in and intervened in the Biggie Smalls caravan, was involved in the murder. I don't know if I ever heard Gene talk. Oh, Gene and them ran the light. Uh, incredibly, and in what must amount to perjury, Cass claimed that LAPD does not consider David Mack a suspect and that they have no evidence that Amir Muhammad committed the murder. This statement is one of the reasons why, this is one of the reasons, by the way, for the motion to compel from Ms. Wallace's attorneys to get Cass deposed again to testify about the reported confession by Amir Muhammad. Brian 
Tyndale's April 29th, 2004 declaration is very sad reading from a longtime supporter of Russell Poole and also at times blatantly prejudiced and a complete contradiction of the documentary report of which we have copies, he claims. That Mac, Biggie Small's murder, no patterns of activity with regard to time of, I have copies of these time sheets and they certainly do exactly as Russell has testified. Tenno also claims that this is new to me, that the LAPD did at some point do a ballistics test on the weapons and ammunition seized from Max home, which confirmed that they were not used in Biggie Small's murder. As to when this alleged testing was done, there is no reference and the, and the supporting exhibits have been filed under seal. Looking at Tenno's declaration above, it is interesting to note that in Max's response to the first interrogations and exhibits of May 4th, 2004, he repeatedly accuses Tyndall, Grant, and Russell of a conspiracy to fabricate evidence against him. Further, according to Mac, the city attorney's office has been in contact with him during his incarceration discussing his innocence. Not to the sound too conspiratorial, conspiratorial, but might these discussions be these discussions between defendant parties account for Tyndall's strange declaration and for him now not being able to recall specifics in his deposition for this case as to Max membership in the blood gang, the fruit of Islam or the shrine in Max garage, according to total contradiction to the statements and reports provided by Russell at the time, Tyndall's, documents, Tyndall's deposition statements are cited from Max response page five to seven, or paragraphs five to seven, I don't know. Other interesting new pieces of information. Detective Grant stated that David Mack tried to recruit fellow officer Lowe to work off duty for death row in March 1997. A claim Mack denies. Defendant Mack's response to first interrogate. Oh, okay, same shit. Mike Holton. What is this? Wiretap tapes. Get rid of the guns. Ramp up officers request to hear tapes just before co co in interviews can't lock them. Detective, I don't know what the fuck this is. And Charlie, a wiretaps again, request to hear tape and see notes. I don't know what the hell he accuses police of trying to put case on hardworking rampart officers causing sight to become visibly upset, crying. Sid tells Poole the next day, Lieutenant Hearn informed, requested off the case, denied. Why did the tapes disappear? Why was Russell denied? Employees report, detective pool, information on death row records. My partner, Officer Brown, advised me as Gertie of a conversation that took place between himself, his friend that is an employee guard at the Lancaster State Prison. Officer Brown stated he had a conversation with his his friend, 
Soto Mike on three three ninety three thirty ninety seven. Soto told him about the conversation he had with the inmate at the prison. The inmate told Soto that he loaned Suge Knight the money to start Death Row Records and that he knew of Officer Kevin Gaines' employment with Death Row Records. The inmate stated Officer Gaines and other LAPD officers provided security for members of Death Row Records during various criminal activities. The officers accompanied the members during drug deals and acted as lookouts and advisors. The officers monitored police frequencies, assisted in choosing locations for drug transactions, and surprised at officers came at and surprised at Officer Gaines' death. Wait. The officers monitored police frequencies, assisting in choosing locations for drug transactions and gave information on police tactics. The MA stated he was not surprised at Officer Kevin Gaines' day, death, but he believed it would be from someone else opposed to a fellow officer. The MA also stated, just wait until they search his house and see all the expensive things he got from working for death row. I contacted, I contacted Detective Poole and advised of the following information. Police participated in drug deals, monitored police frequencies, and tore police tactics for various criminal activities of death row records. Look at this shit, y'all. <laughs> Reggie Wright and Greg Caden, friends on Twitter. Greg Caden tied to Reggie Wright, official suspect in Biggie Small's murder, as well as the person named in the confession letter. Caden was the first person to reference the confession letter on the, on the internet and is the former partner, Darren Dupree, who was present when the letter was handed to LAPD. Eternal Affairs commenced investigation into a leak. Let me see so. Twitter started in 2006 of March. When Ray Kading when was he assigned to Biggie's for the case? Let's see when this fool was signed, assigned to Biggie's case. In 2011, he self-published the book. Gray came in. He retired from the department. He worked in the robbery armor after 22 years of service in June 2010. The following year, Caden released his book, a flowing document about his book began shooting in 2013. He was a private guest in Wait a minute. When did this nigga get assigned to the case?
Slim, Slim, the Greg dating assigned Christopher Wallace case. Do anybody know? Let's see. Is this it? Kaden. He was in charge of a special task force that investigated Christopher Wallace between 2006 and 2009. And when did Twitter start? Two thousand six. So two thousand six to two thousand nine, he was on the case. And you tell me this thing was following him and Reggie was following each other on Twitter. These motherfuckers was friends. Greg Kanan tied Reggie Wright Jr., official suspect in Biggie Small's murder, as well as the person named in the confession letter. Caden was the first person to reference the confession letter on the internet and is the former partner, Darren Dupree, who was present when the letter was handed to LAPD. Gray Caden tied to Reggie Wright Jr., official suspect in Biggie Small's murder, as well as the person named in the confession letter. Caden was the first person to reference the confession letter on the internet. Same shit. All right. These niggas is Twitter buddies. Judge Stephen Wilson weighs in on Gray Caden's behavior in the George Torres Ramos case. Let's see what this say. First affidavit incorrectly quotes Rory L. as saying to George Torres, give Alfredo Garcia a call. Ask him, hey, what's up? What did you do? And Rory, what did you and Rory do to some Mayette over there yesterday? In fact, the correct statement was, give Alfredo Garcia a call. Ask him, hey, what's up? What did you and Rory do with some Mayette over there yesterday? In many situations, a misstatement like this could be explained as an inadvertent. What's this word? Oh, shit. Damn it. I need to see what that word means. Inadvertent, not resulting from or achieved through deliberate planning.
explained as an inadvertent mistake. This is a unique situation, however, because the conversation was overheard and recorded on a wiretap. As a result, Officer Caden had at his disposal the actual recording of the conversation and the summary of the conversation as transcri transcribed, transcribed by the operators in the wiretap room. Both the actual recording and the call summary revealed that What's this person name? Leila Maya said, with some Maya, not to some Maya, there's an obviously important distinction between doing something with a person and doing something to a person. Furthermore, this ain't got shit to do with this case. What's all this? Oh, I, damn, this is the murder of Tupac Shakur synopsis. The murder of Tupac Shakur was a lesson in street justice that turned terribly wrong. I'm, I'm going I'm to do that tomorrow. I ain't going to read all that shit right now. Oh, I definitely gotta read that. This shit got a lot of Reggie shit in it. Oh yeah, I definitely gotta come back to that. All right, that's. I want y'all to hear uh, this nigga deposition. Reggie's deposition. You gotta hear Reggie's deposition. You got to. This is it here, cause he talked about some of this stuff, and then his shit changes in here. This is about the, the gun, the Glock 40, right? Now, I know Reggie wasn't expecting us to have his deposition. <laughs> Watch this, y'all, because this stupid nigga talked about this. He going to probably take that shit down, right? Now, remember what Kevin Hackey said about the gun? Reggie talked about this the other day. It's... Uh, I don't know about the other day, but I seen it. I watch, I'm going to play it. Watch. Watch this. Now, this is Reggie Rice's deposition, y'all. Reggie Rice Jr. Now, let me see uh, his answer. This, ain't, this is page 52 of it. They asked him a question. He said, let me see. Maybe August, September 95. They questioned him about that gun that he, uh, who was it? Fatal that got caught with the gun? They questioned him about the gun that Fatal, Fatal got caught with that he gave to, that he had Hacky go pick up. The gun that killed goddamn Tupac. This is what they asked him about, right? That gun that got took from Fatal. And then Kevin Hackey went and got it back and gave it to Reggie, right? Listen to this. Let me see, maybe August or September 95. Do you ever recall an occasion where any of your employees provided your right-way protective service employees ever provided you with a weapon that came from a police department? Reggie says, I heard that allegation before somewhere. I don't remember. I don't remember where. I know the incident you are speaking of, but the gun was never given back to me. <laughs> <laughs> ah! 
This boy is a liar. So, you were never provided with a weapon by any of your employees that, to your knowledge, came from a police department. No. And Kevin Hackey never provided you with a weapon that allegedly came from a police department? That's correct. Wait, you know what? That's not correct. That, ain't that Reggie? <laughs> ain't that that nigga? Uh, uh, Tupac ain't fire me. Well, you know what? Tupac did fire me, but you know he just did that to get on get under shield skin, right? So Kevin Hackey never provided you with a weapon that was allegedly from the police department. That's correct. You know what? That's not correct. Okay. That's not correct. Kevin did give me a gun that was taken from, it was taken what it was. Yeah. Uh, it was an incident where a gun was taken from, uh, we had a concert or something. Uh, it was taken off of, uh, it was taken off of one of the artists that was with us. And one other of the security guys took and held the gun. And somehow I think him and Kevin hooked up and he gave the gun back to Kevin Hackey. I remember me and Kevin meeting about it and Kevin telling me he was going to give me the gun, but I don't never remember him giving me the gun. I don't ever remember receiving the gun back from him. I remember the incident, but I don't remember if I got the gun or what happened to the gun. Nigga, you know what happened to the gun. The gun killed Tupac. The gun killed Tupac. Is this nigga busted or what, y'all? Did you ever send that hacky to go get the gun? Uh, I told Kevin to go meet with the guy. I think... It was Santa Monica or LAPD, uh, LAPD cop. Uh, I don't know. I don't remember too much about it. Kevin probably gave it back to the guy that he took it from. I don't know. Do you know who he took it from? It was either Tupac or one of his boys. Now, how many times we seen this nigga tell his story, y'all? That nigga remember this shit so clear. But in his deposition, this motherfucker is clueless. He know where he got the gun from. He tell the story all the time, bro. Do you know who you took the gun? Do you know who he took the gun from? It was either Tupac or one of his boys. Do you know what type of gun it was? It was a Glock, a 40 caliber. Why did you tell Kevin to go get this gun from the police officer? I was going to give the gun back to the owner of it. <laughs> Just a second ago, he can't remember if he fucking... If he got the gun, if you kill my nigga, bro. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> hey, yo. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. 
This nigga is a liar, bro. Oh my God, bro. This nigga is a liar in three quarters, boy. I was going to give it back to the owner of it. Well, who was the owner of it? Who? Uh, it was somebody who was somebody we were supplying security for. One of the guys, it was um one of the Tupac boys, somebody that was with Tupac. I don't know which one it was. Was there ever an occasion where any of your police officers ever provided you with another weapon other than the one we were just discussing? No. So you ultimately never forgot so you ultimately never got the gun from Kevin Hackey? I don't remember that because I don't know what I did with the gun, if I got it. But I do remember some discussions about that now. I was wondering what the heck you were talking about. When did the officer White get shot? What year? I didn't shoot him. I know you didn't shoot him. Did death row records strike that? Did right way protective services ever hire individuals other than retired police officers, active police officers, or individuals who had a police background? Did death row records? No. Right way protective services. Repeat the question. Sure. Did right way protective services ever hire anyone than active duty officers that were retired? And that's all they got. They just got that page there. All right. This is a copy of the confession letter given to Fox 11 journalist Christopher. I interviewed him independently March 6, 2014 about the origin of the letter. He received the letter in 1998 and a package was attempted to be, be delivered to Fox 11 studios that was refused. That package was the alleged contained the murder weapon used to kill Tupac Shakur. Let's see what this confession letter says. There was a major problem with I don't know what the fuck that say. It was a major problem with blank, I think, stealing. Two songs that Tupac came out with were written by Little Half Day. Little Half Day was an up and coming rap singer. He gave four demos to Tupac to look over because, because he something Tupac at the something hotel. Tupac promised that he would look over the demos. Little Ab Dad never heard from Tupac. And three months later, after Tupac received the demos, the song Brenda Got a Baby was released. Brenda Got a Baby was written by Little Ab Dad. That's bullshit. I ain't even read no more of that. This nigga fucking Brenda Got a Baby, nigga. That was way before he got the motherfucking death row. I don't believe this. Ain't no way in hell. 
this nigga told me he wrote Brenda. He gave him a uh, when he came up like what? Oh wait, this shit might have been early. Hold on. The demo Luda have that never heard from Tupac. And three months later, after Tupac received the demos, the song Brenda Got a Baby was released. Brenda's Got a Baby was written by Ludo Abdad. Ludo Abdad let that slide, but he continued to go different to different recording studios. Finally, in 94, Ludo Abdad started making money and he was sponsored. Mostly by Suge Knight. What Knight did not know was that Ludo Avdad found out that he was being sold to priority. There was a meeting in Reno, and Ludo Avdad and Tupac had a dispute about songs that were taken. Ludo Avdad was beaten down by Tupac soldiers. As the day went by, there were there was meetings with ICG. Is that say Gear Gang? Ghost Town, Front Street, 52 A Trays, a South Park bounty was put on Tupac and Knight. Mr. Mr. Wright Jr gave info where Tupac was going to be. There were six different barricades that no matter what would have happened, no one would have been able to make it out. I was I was the shooter that was told to take Knight out. Ludo Abdad was the one that took Tupac out. As for the gun that was used, it will be dropped off at security booth at Fox 11. Please do not have to stop or talk to none of the of my please do not have stop or talk to one of my dropping off the gun i don't know about that letter tell xcon how how you want it delivered i don't want to put it in a box because I don't, this ain't even the same hand right here. This person right where he needed in this person. Tell XCon how you want it delivered. I don't want to put it in a box case. I don't want them thinking it's a bomb. If you need any other information, give XCon at least so I can meet him where I feel I am more comfortable. If you would like, I will call you on a safe number and give you details of clothing car streets and describe anything you need to know to prove that I was there the night Tupac tried to escape like a little piss bitch. Like a little peeing bitch. The second page of the confession letter given to me by journalist Chris Bond on March 6th Blotter spoke to Malcolm Patton on the telephone and confirmed many details about the Tupac murder. He contacted Las Vegas Metro Police to provide them with the letter and was told that they had no interest in it. All right, this part, I'm going to do them all. Along with 
showing y'all Reggie, Reggie Father, Orlando, them kicking it all in the MGM after the after the fight. Like they, that shit is crazy too to me. And I got some other stuff too, but this is gonna take a little while, y'all. <laughs> this is gonna take a little while, right? But I know one thing: that whole KVD shit is bullshit. That whole KVD, so all that stuff we went through right there. I don't see no KVD in there. I don't see no KVD in there. Here's why KVD know he ain't getting arrested. And that's why KVD said, yeah, well, if I get arrested, Reggie better get arrested for Biggie murder, right? But as you can see, Reggie is the number one suspect in the Biggie murder. But Greg Caden probably gave the nigga immunity, so now he, he might be clear. I don't know if he got federal or state immunity, if he got any immunity. But as we can see, Greg Caden was his boy. These niggas following each other on Twitter. I'm sorry. The KVD story is bullshit. But we all we heard over a hundred times that Reggie was the number one suspect in the motherfucking Biggie murder. And what he did, put it on Poochie. <laughs> that nigga put it on Poochie. First he tried to put it on KVD and them, and that didn't work. So then they tried to put it on Poochie. Yeah, y'all see what time it is. Oh my God, boy. Russell Poole, you had it right all the time, brother. Your work ain't going in vain, brother. It's motherfucking 30 years later, and we still presenting your evidence. You did your damn thing. Choke no joke. I'll catch y'all in the morning, man, on the morning walk. walk all right? Morning news. We're going to talk about this on the morning walk. I got to hear what y'all got to say. Because I didn't get to see none of the, the comments because I was reading. All right? Choke no joke. I'll catch you out tomorrow, man. Your boy needs some sleep. I'm tired, man. I'm tired. Ain't no telling. Might be another time feeling. Check it out. Choke no joke. Learn from mistakes. DJ S and S the great. It ain't no telling you be a first time felon. No telling when you be a first time felon. It ain't no telling you be a first time felon. No telling when you be a first time felon. Best day of my life, no sleep all night. Broke day for weeks, my cash was right. My cop will tight, take our loot, unite. 23 hour shifts, had to see loot like Mike. Cash lovely, yeah, Dougie. How could this day get so ugly? Wifey about to pop. Like some bubbly Yo, doodles now most do really bug me Felt like a star Cop first car Get up with the guard What it is, baby, Paul He about to cop a van Get up with our mans Before we reached our low spot Toes blam Underwear, what happened Discussing the clapping It wasn't loud Ain't shit gonna happen Me being stupid Instead of getting they moving This nigga kept chefing Like the woo one Then we heard a knock No one knew where this spot Six niggas in the spot, six niggas not. Nah. Ain't no telling you be a first time felon. No telling when you be a first time felon. It ain't no telling you be a first time felon. No telling when you be a first time felon. It ain't no telling you be a first time felon. No telling when you be a first time felon. I'm in the precinct all damn evening. This good cop, bad cop shit got me steaming. No, I was caught. I ain't give a fuck. Had jokes like the usual suspects line up. Move times up, came back fuck. Shirt wrinkled up, my pigs rough me up. Times up, heard them clink of the cuffs.
Yo, Darius, you can get the merch on my website, chokenojokeproductions.com. All right, if you have any problems, hit me up and send me a message. Niggas was so deep, they had to call on the bus. Everybody the checks outside waiting on us. Like ghetto celebs, our cells ain't flush. Five in the book and gave a whooping. He never forget, they gotta be split. Up in the courtroom, they cause it rock us. Everybody in the jacks, waiting on us. Try to bail us out, that thought got thrown out. Bill one so I couldn't be half in the gal. Hopped out, that's what first fell in the bow. Back on the bus, right is the route. Wifey in the courtroom, crying out. We love y'all with tears running in their mouth. It ain't no telling, you be a first time felon. No telling, when you be a first time felon. It ain't no telling, you be a first time felon. No, no telling, tellin when you be a first time felon. Choke no joke, learn from mistakes. Keep chasing that paper, you gonna catch a case. DJ S and S, the great.
dripping the floor from a juices. All who had me stone, had a Korean and Medusa at one. And when I look in her eyes, between her thighs, I tell you no lie, ain't shit won't buy. I rob and take it for me to taste it. Red lobster, pussy, biscuit, freshly baked. Uh, eat that coochie all night. She spray my face like sugar spray. I love her. I eat her coochie all night. She spray my face like sugar spray. I love her. Suck my nuts when I wake up. Got more than wood and I just bust one. And my hog and knee, I'm wrong eyes lead. Between the sheets, she want to ski. And just shout with me with what I thought was pee. She rolled the D, her water broke B. Not pregnant, but baptized me. I'm down for more love, but change the sheet. She said, please, I want more. Next thing I know, mattress dripping the floor from her juices. Oral had me stoned, had a Korean and Medusa at one. And when I look in her eyes, between her thighs, I tell you no lie, ain't shit won't buy. I rob and take it for me to taste it. Red lobster, pussy biscuit, freshly baked. Uh, eat that coochie all night. She spray my face like sugar spray. I love her. I eat her coochie all night. She spray my face like sugar spray. I love her. Joke, no joke, no joke. You know what it is. You know what it is. Hey, son. Hi, when are you coming home? Mommy's not coming home. Why? Goodbye. Where are you? Where are you? Mommy's not coming home. Why? Tell, tell daddy I'm not coming home. Why? Goodbye. Bye. What am I supposed to do? Tell this 10 year old boy I'm getting some new dick or something? Check. Yeah. Choke, no joke. Know what it is. This go out to the Desperate Housewives in New York, Atlanta, Texas, California, Miami, Mississippi. I never thought in my life Not me I fall for another man's wife Oh God I know that it sounds trite I'm caught up with a desperate housewife yeah. I never thought in my life Not me I fall for another man's wife Oh God I know that it sounds trite I'm caught up with a desperate housewife It was quick how it happened We was just chatting Had a lot in common I kept her laughing in the department in which a man was lacking, he was the king of the ship, so my, I became captain, my swag on platinum, all my gold DJ smacking, then phone sex had happened, things went left, I call it interest in sex, something like little Kim and you have, we knew if we met, it would be electric, then the day came, and we met, it was beyond my dream, a dream so sweet, it made me scream, it was like a dream, he made a queen I wanted to find Marty McFly And use that time machine Run up in the church Create a scene Object to that wedding And give him my ring Like uh. I never thought in my life Not me I fall for another man's wife Oh God I know that it sounds trite I'm caught up with A desperate housewife yeah. I never thought in my life Not me I fall for another man's wife Oh God I know Sound trife, I caught up with a desperate housewife. I fell harder than a mother, my number one lover. Yo, under them covers was like no other. Had everything in common. I used to love her until he bugged her. Bitch, motherfucker. Device in the whip, had to call it quits. Hit us like a brick. We both sick. Now she got dilemma, like Kelly the kids. I'm calm, wish I never met the chick. Missing her seafood and our trips Sex in the soul house, we did that shit Sexing on the tent, we risked that shit We both freaky 
as fuck. I miss my chick. Well, never mind. Dare to take him off of mine. Kindred spirits, just the wrong time. Get divorced, you can hear my line. Until I repent, it's next lifetime. Like, I never thought in my life. Not me. I fall for another man's wife. Oh, God. I know that it sounds trite. I'm caught up with a desperate housewife. Yeah. I never thought in my life Not me I fall for another man's wife Oh God I know that it sound trife I caught up with a desperate housewife Joke, no joke You already know It's that south side of Eden War flow We out of here Joke, no joke Yeah Choke, no joke. You know what it is. Let's go, let's go. 2020, rich niggas, money funny. We got killer bees and I lost my honey. My little sex master, yeah, she was a distraction. To my mathematics, then Corona happened. The government capping on what's really happening. Rock Nation signing niggas that's out here right And Jay's the captain of the ship. Ain't this a bitch you keep his sign and snitch? We lost Andre and Rich, life's a bitch Can't have a funeral, no matter if you rich Or poor, overpopulated at morgues Funeral homes, bodies all on the floor No food in stores, no me no more These the last days if you never prayed Have faith, all sort of illicit days Yo, it's tough when you see Puff rock a hoodie with his baby mama hanging from a cross, you lost. Damn, you told the CEO on the gram he was a handsome man. Oh. That's sexual harassment in front of millions of fans. You made five on the scram like Sunday Leticia. Uh -huh. Joseph don't leave, Mary and Jesus. Uh -huh. Sags, self-pleasing, some sneak thieves. If we were kids, you call them flat leavers. They use you, don't need you. It's birth you, they see ya. Cross you, then be ya, curve you and flee ya Niggas wanna be you, until they see you They idolize you, like you in the case Nigga, you know who got punched in the face In the A on stage, or any place A nigga like me, never retire like me And don't even care if the church is the escape Last real nigga alive, amongst your face Y'all big bad, no frost in the my face can't come out, Epstein flight log is out And tell us, what that spirit cooking about? Head to head with a satanist and niggas in doubt The power of the dark side block me out That's why I'm blacking, get it in any sport trick That's why you the non-factor 6 9 keep acting, like you ain't acting You wasn't flagging, in the court yapping That tough guy on the gram was just blabbing I'm the king of New York, at y'all niggas I'm laughing Magic Plaza, yo 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 Magic Plaza, it's the king of New York Choke no joke, we here now You know what it is Eden Wall, stand up Oh yeah, my man had to come through and make sure it went through. Y'all niggas is in trouble. Choke no joke. I ain't no joke to mixtape. We here now. You already know. Let's go. Choke chillin', got away from them billin'. Ain't shit really changed though. I'm still that villain. I'm making money with rhyme. Fuck black on black crime. Beef and money don't mix like Muslims and swine. I'm talking milk, penicillin. Y'all be illin'. Y'all be thinking y'all killers with your school fits drillin'. Kick that bullshit to me. Y'all be wet though like Bruce Lee and Brandon and Hearst on the highway to heaven. Man, you making mad threats and stuck in one section. I'm OBP like Naughty. Make a connection Talking under your breath Get you something you don't need Two fully loaded Macs Filled up with heat 
nigga, you sweeter than 30 days for a body. Pop shit to these niggas. See me walk by me, but I ain't looking for no beef. I don't eat bologna, but I bring a whole cow. If you run up on me, shiesty. Try me and hype me to peel your wig back like 10 cent icy. Bring it, stop bluffing. I got you threats, they mean nothing. I respond like Bond. I come through on bombing. Playing bodegas, flipping Montega. You tan in the Jacks, I tan in Jamaica. Vega, wouldn't bust if he raped ya. Your chick got blazed up, hit it like Jada. Why you blew up a pager? Had a brief like Vader. Your star at war with the lightsaber. I'm here to lyrically tear you. Red nigga, you a spear. I jack you up, now you out of here. Throw me on the 600. Now fuck your nigga humming. Blowing down a fab with a bad bitch blunted. I take it there. Y'all niggas don't want it. Y'all niggas don't want it. Y'all niggas don't want it with no joke. Who you thought it be? Represent the NYC. Bring it on if you niggas want some of me. Have y'all niggas feeling it like Jay Z. Uh, no joke. Who you thought it be? Represent the NYC. Bring it on if you niggas want some of me. Bronx King like the L O R D F I N E double S C. Uh. And that bullshit y'all do, y'all niggas don't stress me. Oh yeah, and you already know, eat and war what it is. Uh. Choke, no joke. I ain't no joke. The mixtape, we here now. Joke, no joke, I'm out. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Shout out to everybody that subscribed. I'm going to shout out all the new subscribers tomorrow morning, all right? Peace and love.